Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Batumi! My name is Ian the Machine Freeman. It gives me great pleasure to be your host this evening. For here we are at Eclipse Casino and Hotel for GFC 17. Our sponsors for this evening are Eclipse Casino, Metro City and Batumi Fight Academy. But I would like to introduce two people into the cage. Without these two, we could not have the amazing event that we have for you tonight. So please welcome into the cage the president of GFC and the Mixed Martial Arts Federation, Georgi Kalabashvili. And alongside him, the founder of Batumi Fight Academy, Lasha Baramidza. Bogusamemitvelo <laughs> Talian Magat Gurte Damit Gada, well, a very chamber, the guys, the other day, and all the test well of him. Mazo Bagasha, Talian, the Lumis Mandoza, May Roberts, organizers, the TP Robert Gadu, Daugus, and Samaway, the Long Nishno, and Dolly Bilba, Tadalia Pizia, and Oliver Smith. That's why the Nishno, and maybe the Huela Sportsman, Susuo, Sarbate, Jantelova, Tantoreva, and Zoris. Mazo Bakita Virtu did him of the Bogesamo <laughs> Sabzolo, I tell you, Saka, Hamid Taubeva, Juni Zafuli, Alatho, the GFC, Sakatos, the Rodu, Shero, the Rodu Federalists, Tel Guns, Rata, Tres, Zalia Bagan, Saramor, Gamosu, Zalia Dinishova, Chatares, I told Lamagas, Zalia Di Malova Sofi. Talia di Matova Sutti, Kaubania Eclipse, Roman Mats Mopsa, is Sasha de Baro, Chen, Cheguesbo, I am Donis, I am Rangis, Sarah Magaguetti Teviata, Harisi, Fentu Toshia Passes, Mevgoni, Zadia Magaria. The Kaubania Metros, Metro Holdings, Tian Gunstad, Tavis Tabutnek, Roman Mats Mopsa, is Garemodes. So ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have 17 bouts. We will start with two K1 bouts of three three-minute rounds. Batumi, are you ready? So please welcome your first fighter to the cage in the red corner, Sotne Sultanesvili. Fight night. 
We are live from the Eclipse Casino in Batumi. I'm Ian M16 Mullin. I will be joined by MC and commentator Ian Rashid Freeman. with a very impressive record of 16 wins and only three defeats. The end of this contest is 63 kilograms. Both fighters were back on the range yesterday. Fast action, very little clinch. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome his opponent into the blue corner, Maha Azadani! So his opponent making his way down to the blue corner. It's Maha Azadani. Azadani is from Azerbaijan. He has a record of six wins and two defeats. Also win on the Olympics yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a K1 bout consisting of three three-minute rounds. So let me introduce your fighter in the red corner. This fighter weighed in at 63 kilograms. He has 16 wins with three losses. Fighting out of Georgia, please welcome Sotini Sultanishvili. And now welcome his opponent in the blue corner. This fighter weighed in at 63 kilograms. He has a record of six wins and two losses. Representing Baku, Azerbaijan, Maha Azezade! This fight is at the center and we get ready for the first fight. This is K1 kickboxing. In the red corner, Sultanishvili. In the blue corner, Azadzadeh. And the fighters are indicated by the color of the tape on their gloves. Oh, okay. Okay. What the ABB? Yeah, you don't. Know. Okay. So Sultanishvili in the red. Azadzade in the blue. This is Azerbaijan versus Georgia. And I'm joined by Ian the Machine Freeman. Just a slight delay at the moment. The referee is indicating he's waiting for something. He gets the fighters to the centre. Well, here we go. K1 here at GFC 17. What we call our preliminary bouts. Nice team there to start off. Yeah, you see the tie armbands indicating he's probably got a very tight style with a nice lead kick for the front leg. Very tall and rangy, isn't he? Very tall indeed. He's, he's going to use those kicks, isn't he? He's going to yeah. use those kicks to keep the distance. And as you saw straight away with a high kick. So we're interested to see how he deals with this with a tie style. He can't have much clinch. He's standing Again, that typical tie, stepping with the front leg yeah, and like up the, with a kick. Like a little bounce, isn't it? A little bounce just to get his, his range, his timing right. He's actually got nice hands as well, his counter left, right. And they see that. One strike in the clinch and break. 
Oh, nice high kick. That was a question mark kick straight to the left-hand side. Yeah, nice work there. Sultan Ishvili yet to get into this fight, but he's shown a nice front kick, and then that time the front kick turned into the round kick. The punches that Sultan Ishvili has, they're a little sort of inside punch instead of turning the arm around. Azadzadi with a nice lead round kick and then straight into a front kick. Yeah, he did a spinner back fist there, slightly missed. Kalazaki is the fighter I'm thinking of. Kalazaki throws a... Kalazaki, yes. She throws exactly the same kind yeah, of happy punches. Happy slapping, Nicole. And it looks like he's slapping, but Kalazaki was knocking people out with those Kal shots. So. Unbeaten. Yeah, he's coming forward now, Ian Sultanashvili. So again, fainting with that kick, just bouncing up and down, constantly giving Sultan Ishvili something to think about. And you can really tell when he gets inside clinch, he wants to do that Thai style of knees and knees, and he can't. As I said, he's timing slightly off. That was a trip. He's timing slightly off. You see, when he's, he's throwing punches, he's stepping forward, and he, he's actually punching past the mark. He's not punching short. You see how there? He's punching behind the head. He's timing slightly out, he's coming in too close, he's got such a long reach. He seems to be struggling there the, with the left hook. The distance. A little clash of heads there. So, again, Azadzadi using that long, rangey front kick. And again, they get into the clinch, and Azadzadi looks like he just wants to carry on working in the clinch, and he can't. Nice, nice team, nice. that was beautiful. As has had it finished off with a nice kick. Well, Sultan Ishvili was just starting to get into that fight. Just starting to find his rhythm. But then as has had it, he seemed to come back a lot quicker. Yeah, so here we go, the replay. And you'll see it was a lot of nicely picked kicks. He mixed the kicks really well to the body and then up to the head. And then you see in that clinch, he looks a little frustrated that he can't let those knees go in the clinch. Sultan has to feel like the more experienced of the two. However, he really seems to be struggling to get to distance with Azadzadeh. Yeah, he's timing slightly out, isn't it? So instructions here from the corners. Well, a lot can make a break with corner instructions. We've seen that many a time, Ian. They, you know, they're not doing so well in one round. Corner men give them some good advice to come out and they start they start smashing it, so let's see. I do think, especially so after the first round, when they've had a first chance to have a look at how the fight's gone, really key what the corner says to you after the first round. And here we go with round number two. We have Azadzadeh in the blue, Sultan Ishvili in the red, indicated oh, nice by the kick, Azadzade. And again to the midsection. Looking for that swinging left hook after the kicks is Azadzadeh. Oh, that corner with the right hook. That was nice word. That's it. A little bit. I don't know if he just paused or. But again, we just have one strike in the clinch. Referee warning as it's at it. So that was Sultan Ishvili's best shot, really, wasn't it? He stepped back off and oh, came back again. And right cross. That high kick again. The long limbs. Yeah, he lifts that foot up effortlessly. You can see the frustration, can't you, in Azadzadeh in the clinch. Just keeps pushing him off. Nice tip. When he does throw the shots, he's nice and calculated. I think he's just not throwing enough. Oh, powerful. Well, we could pass that as a knockdown. It doesn't matter where the punch lands, that might have landed on the body. Might have landed on the shoulder even, but that was enough power to knock him down. No one sees you have to hit them in the head to get a knockdown score. And I like this tighter work as well from Sultan Ishvili. Now he's coming in with his hands up tight and then letting go of some more powerful shots. Again. Azazade getting one for too many strikes in the clinch. Yeah, and Sultan Ishvili just starting to find his range and his rhythm a little bit. Oh, 
Again, as Azade with that slapping punch, as we sort of noticed it before, Ian. Yeah, Sultanish Villa, 19 fights, and it might oh, be a nice left hook. You know, maybe he's took the first round to have a look, and he knows to pace his fights because he does seem to be stepping through the gears now a little. Another hit on the break for the referee saying carry on. Well, if the referee's happy with that, it must have been called in the rules meeting. Protect yourself at all times, even on the break. Well, I think Azadzadi keep pushing him off in the clinch, and I think he's thought, well, if you're not going to push me, I'm going to give you one. Oh, that's another clean shot. Nice tip to the face. Should the nice Gilly come forward now? The crowd are going crazy. He's the man from Georgia, he's piling it on. Picking the shots nicely. Oh, nice job. The bell. That was a solid finish to round number two there from Sotney and Sultanish Villa. Well, that woke the crowd up, didn't it? This is the more experienced man here stepping through the gears and coming through. And for me, I'm not an expert in scoring K1, but I do think that's around each area. Yeah, I think it's one inch, definitely one inch. Body shot. You can see as his added blocked his elbows there when he got hit the liver. There's the mouthpiece out. Yeah, big shots there. A very strong finish to the round. Stop the insult of his villa and the crowd really got behind him there. This time it's the corner of Azadi, I think had a lot of work to do. Get their corner man, their man out. Well, the corner man's still in there, and he's been told to leave. So here we go, round number three. Sultanish Villa. It's all in this round, isn't it? One eight, I think. Oh, nice overhand right. That's a good, solid start there from Sultanish Villa in the red. Azadi needs to get on those long kicks and keep him at distance, I think. Nice body shot there on the break. The left hook powered yeah. in behind the elbow. Yeah, as Azadi, like you see, keeps looking at the referees if to see why is he keep hitting me on the break. Referee's quite happy with it. Yeah, well, I think the rule is they, they break off and, and the action continues. Sultanish Villa really playing to the, to the Again, to the body. As Azadi clinching a lot more in this third round. It's really hard to clean someone that keeps the hands up in that nice tight sort of Eastern European boxing style guard. And it's working really well there for Sultanish Villa. Referee not happy with the elbow. Spinning elbow is not allowed. Yeah, I think there's one thing doing a spinning back fist and landing the elbow, but when you actually throw it as an elbow, it's a different. So again, it's that lovely guard on the inside. It's again, got... hitting, hitting on the break. It must be perfectly legal. We went there in the rules meeting. Yeah, I think it's more the fact that Azadzadi shouldn't be holding on for so long, so he's hit, that's why he's hitting them on the break. Well, Sultan has really been noticed he's closing the gap a lot, a lot more here. He knows that the, the arm length of Azadzadi cannot connect when he's that close. Yeah, and what shot this really is actually scoring with the close punches. There we go. Referee once again having a word that has his addict. Yeah, I think they've clearly told them that they want the action to keep going and not to hold on more than a second. Yeah, as is Addy looking a little bit tired now. Yeah, the referee having to pull them apart. The last oh, 40 nice seconds. Tape. 30 seconds left. I think this round again will go to Sultanish Villay unless we see something big here from Maha Azadzade. Again, just holding on. He needs to be working. He's the one that should be assertive here, trying to get. 
Yeah, there's a lot of clinching. 10 seconds to go. Again, the referee seems frustrated with Azadzadeh. There we go, that's it. Well, we go to the judges' scorecards. I will give the official announcement as soon as I get the results. So here you see the replay, there's the front kick. And then it was a nice, tight inside work and the striking that really, for me, took that for Sotne Sotnes Villay. You did see, we just discussed on the way down, the difference in the rule set between the Muay Thai and the K1. And I think there you saw Azadari trying too much to use that clinch when it's not really allowed in this rule set. Championship 17 for Tumi Fight Night. This is the second of our K1 kickboxing bouts here. And the fighter making his way down to the blue corner, representing Baku fighters in Azerbaijan, is Turan Gefarov. Gefarov, a very experienced kickboxer. Record of 34 wins, six losses, and one draw. This man has been competing in K1 kickboxing for many, many years. This fight has been made at 65 kilograms. We saw five gold fighters make weight yesterday. And now welcome his opponent to the red corner, Giorgi Valadia! So his opponent's making his way down to the red corner to huge cheers from the crowd. Representing Tbilisi in Georgia is Giorgi Melania. Melania also made weight at 65 kilograms and he has an unbeaten record of eight wins and no defeats now it'll be interesting to see this is the biggest test of his career he is unbeaten he's unbeaten eight fights but he's fighting a man with 41 kickboxing contests under his belt it's a big step up in experience but it's a step up he needs in his unbeaten run Melania will make his way to the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, our next 
gentlemen, this is a K1 bout consisting of three three minute rounds. So let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter weighed in at 65 kilograms. He has a record of 34 wins, six losses and one draw. Fighting out of Baku, Azerbaijan, please welcome to Ran Kafarov. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter also weighed in at 65 kilograms. He has a record of eight wins with no losses. Representing Tbilisi from Georgia, Georgi Maradia. So again, it'll be three three minute rounds of K1 kickboxing action, the last of our kickboxing bouts. We have Georgia versus Azerbaijan. Melania with a red tape on his gloves. Kafarov, the blue. Lot of experience given away here. Malania, he had fights, but he's never been beaten. Yeah, this is a test at the right time in his career for an unbeaten fighter, I think, but is it a step too far against a man with 41 fights, Ian? Yeah, it's a lot to take on, but he must be confident in himself. I mean, especially the hometown boy as well. You wouldn't think they're going to put him in there with somebody who was a killer. I mean, no doubt he is a killer, but he's obviously confident about what he can do. So a little hesitant early on is Melania to be expe expected. Just feel oh, his way nice on. liver punch. Yeah, punched right through the arm there. So, oh, nice. Gafarov moving well, cutting the angles. You've seen as soon as he thought that uh, Melania was going to throw punches, he just stepped slightly to the angle. Took away that punching power. Look at the powerful shots going in there. Yeah, the stand step things up here. It was a nice, heavy body kick from Melania, and then Gafarov with a combination back. Everything's with power. Solid body kick, then down low. Really mixing things up here, these two. If you notice, Gavarov, when he went for that liver kick, he actually switched, switch stands, little switch kick. Creates more power to that left leg to the liver. Melania still using that footwork step forward, but then he takes two left hooks, body and head. Oh, nice uppercut. He caught him on the way in as well. The timing was beautiful. Lovely timing there. Again. Very fast leg kick. I think neither of these two waste many shots. When they do throw them, they throw them with very mean intentions. Well, I've kind of always said, you know, you can use you can use a kick to set up a hand. You can use a hand to set up a kick. But why waste your punches? You know, you see too many people tip tapping all the time, and it's like you, you basically got to wear down your opponent. And the only way you can do that is if you hit with power, and that comes down to a lot of hard training in the gym. Yeah, it does well. These two both seem to be developing huge power, fast shots and very powerful shots when they throw these combinations. Jumping knee. I think importantly from us looking at this early on, Milani is definitely not out of his league here. No, without a doubt. Like I said, he's 8-0. No. Caught him on the way in. Again, going for the liver. That uppercut is working well for Melania. It really is. The double left hook and then the right uppercut. Beautiful shots. And End again. of round one. What a close round that is. We're lucky we've got headphones on, Ian. And not a pen in our hand doing the scoring. Yeah, definitely. I think that was very tough to score. There was nice combination work from Gafarov. I'm sure we'll see on the replays. But Melania with some good single shots, especially, as you pointed out, Ian, picking that right uppercut on his way in. I'm sure we'll see some of that now. There you see the combinations of punches and kicks coming from Gafarov. Like that lovely right uppercut. That one fell short there on the replay, but at least two or three times he landed that uppercut clean. Melania looks relaxed in the corner as he listens to instructions.
Azerbaijan corner staying in a little bit longer than the referee wanted there. But we're ready for round number two. Yeah, here we go. Kafarov starting off with kicks. Yeah, I think they both came forward straight into a clinch there. Kafarov in that southpaw stance, switching into Orthodox. Again with that uppercut. Timing it beautifully. He's now taking he, a few kicks as well as Melania. He got caught there on the switch and he shook his head, but there was definitely a sign there that that got to him, Ian. For a fighter of 41 fights to tell you that didn't hurt, it probably did hurt. So again, he's in that southpaw, then switching to orthodox. And as you pointed out, maybe he's switching to throw the liver kick up. Nice low kick, combination's beautiful. Yeah, picks up left hook to the head, then the low kick. This is a slip in the corner there. Melania comes forward like a Terminator. He, but that, he gets caught with a combination there. Good work he back from Gafarov. Yeah. Well, the experience might be coming through now, Ian. But Melania once more. Oh, that was a nice shot to the liver. Well, he nodded then and said, come on then, if you want it, I'll have it. These two are willing to throw down and what? Well, I was going to say, when you're to throw down. William Tyson Gafarov on like that, looks like he's definitely going to have a, have a war in his hands. <laughs> he sticks the tongue out there, front kick just lands short. These two are really stepping through the gears. Neither wants to take a backward step and neither oh! wants anyone to lose. That actually caught him, obviously not clean. Yeah, flamboyance from both these fighters as well as grit and determination. That lovely half step back and back in from Melania. The definite reddening of the face. Melania's took some shots on that nose. Oh, nice forward. liver punch. That's the second person to slip in the corner there. You could hear that liver punch echo around the hall, Ian. Well, like you see, a second person slipping on that corner. They, they've got officials to move the corner men out the ring. They should be looking down to make sure there's not enough... It's well, too much the way water. these two are sitting the feet, Ian. There's actually blood on the nose now with Melania. Yeah, you could see it started to redden up and then it's just burst from the bridge of the nose. Ten seconds. That was a 10 second knocker, and actually, there, Gafaro thought that it was the final bell. Well, this must be the toughest fight Melania has had so far in his eight fight career. He's took some real shots there. He's coming forward, he's still continuing to come through these shots, but I think there, just for the combination work, I'd have to edge that round to Gafaro. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that, Ian. The way he moves as well, are the combinations left up. Right kick, the solid air every time he throws them. Yeah, I think the, what, the, the combination that stood out for me is when he goes left up to the head, right low kick. You know, as a boxer, you'd expect the right hand to come back. He throws the right low kick with that left hook, and he's been landing them one, two, one, two. So there's a lot of work here. You can see there Melania in the corner drying off his feet. He likes to set his feet for these shots and doesn't want to slip. This is anybody's fight, Ian. I think this third round is just going to be an all-out war. That's what, that's what we want. I'm sure it's what the spectators at home want and definitely the crowd here. We start round number three, Melania in the red, Kefalov in the blue. I expect three, three minutes of action, just like we've had for the first two rounds. It's Gafarov. Experience of Gafarov pushes him back. Oh, that's hard him. His legs went. Oh, nice uppercut. A lovely left up to the body there as well. That was a slip. And the back in Gafarov there, breathing very heavily. Gafarov did the same again, his breath back. 
Well, Milani is letting him off the hook a little bit here. Yeah, I think he needs to carry on this forward pace. Can he keep it up? He's got 90 seconds left. He's come forward for the full fight. As he's tagged, Kefalov, it's the first time we've seen him actually going backwards. Everything with power. Nice combination there by Gafarov. Melania loaded up the right hand, it just missed. And that's two big yeah, shots. Yeah, Gafarov is coming back now. This is the experience. Melania hesitant there, he, he stepped into distance, but is he tired? Has he got enough left to throw these combinations? This has been a frantic fight. Trying to pick his shots correctly, Ian. Yeah, that was a nice leaping left hook in. Swinging a little with that uppercut. Final 30. The pace has slowed a little bit. Who can blame them? Nine seconds of this fight now. So oh. close. 20 seconds to go, and Gafarov caught him with the right hand. Coming back is Melania with shots of his own into the clinch. 10 seconds left. Oh, here we go in. Very close. Oh, that rocked him. Melania wobbled a little bit with that right hand. And then he comes back and finishes with the combination of his own. That was a very, very close. Unbelievable Great action fight. Which watched the fast replay. It was Gefarov who landed the shots and then dropped to his back. We have another decision. We'll hand over. The judges' scores are in with the referee. Toughest fight of his career. No one could have argued with a draw there. A little arguing and some words there after. And that is the end of our kickboxing bouts. We will get started with the mixed martial arts. 15 professional mixed martial arts contests coming up. We have some great fights on the main card. There was fireworks at the weigh-ins yesterday. Especially the first of our main card fights. Bout number 11 was a female flyweight contest. And they really got fired up, driving their heads into each other at the weigh-in. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our K1. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for mixed martial arts? So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our sponsors for GSC 17. Our main sponsor is Eclipse Casino and Hotel, Metro City and Batumi Fight Academy. Our referees for these MMA bouts are Suleiman Alamanyan, Vasul Beramov, and our judges, Sophie Bagishvili and Raul Tuturauli. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the action? Then please welcome our first MMA fighter 
to the cage in the blue corner, Ali Shah Shahia. This is GFC 17, the start of the mixed martial arts action. All professional contests fall to over three five minute rounds, apart from our main event, which is a title fight over five five minute rounds. The first fighter making his way down to the blue corner, representing Turkey. And his debut in mixed martial arts as a professional is Alishan Chakayev. Chikayev weighed in yesterday at 61.2 kilograms. He's a tall, rangy bantamweight. And you'll see him there checked over by the assistant referee. We'll apply the Vaseline and then allow him entry into the blue corner. a huge stage all around the city we've seen the big banners the big electric tvs it's everywhere and these fighters have been treated like superstars it's such a way to make a professional debut here shine this is the first of the georgian fighters to step in the cage and represent their country here Just again, as mentioned, the main sponsor, Eclipse Casino, where we are holding this event. Also, Metro City and the Batumi Fight Academy. This also couldn't be done without a Georgian Mixed Martial Arts Federation and the President, Georgi Kubalashvili. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is an MMA bout in the GFC Bantamweight division. So let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 20 years old. He weighed in at 61.2 kilograms. He stands 175 centimeters tall and is making his MMA debut from Bursa, Turkey. Please welcome Anishan Shakayev. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 20 years old. He weighed in at 61.2 kilograms. He stands 178 centimeters tall and also making his MMA debut. Representing Butami Fight Academy from Batumi, Georgia. Gocha Shiranza! And your referee for this bout Suleiman Alamorian. So here we go with this bantamweight contest. We have Shainitze in the red representing Georgia and Shakayev in the blue. A touch of gloves and the action will begin. These two fighters are making their debuts here. And it's a big right hand attempt from Shainitze, ducked under by Shakayev. Well, Shainitz is no doubt the home favourite. He's from here. Batumi. Oh, nice right hand. He went. He used that right hand for the takedown. He's got the wizard. Yeah, Chakayev trying to counter with that valley drop. He needs to keep that wizard, otherwise he's going to lose it. Oh, he needs to be careful of the guillotine. Yeah, good transition there into the front headlock attack from Chakayev. Trying to block in that knee. There's still room for the right knee up the middle. You need to be careful leaning on each other too much like that. You've got to go with the floor. Somebody pushes on you, you come backwards and do the throw. That nice knee to the body, though. Swinging a little wildly. Yeah, and shot a little bit from way out as well. 
He's got the double, he needs to go to side control, and he does. And this could be the turnaround here for him. A lift, a turn of those hips, and he's into side. So side control here on top. He's turned the knees away from him. Yeah, hip cancellation as we call it. Turn the hips away, turn the knees away. Gives you control, he's now in half guard. Yes. Steps over to mount easily. Oh, this could be it. But Chikayev just kept it, he turned his hips and just left his back on the floor. Oh, he's trapped an arm as well, and that looks very, very dangerous indeed. It does, he's gonna let go of some shots now. If Shagayev has got no mount escape, this could be over he's three minutes as well. No bridging, he's not planting his feet. He just he takes the shots. back, flattens him out exactly like he should do. And Shainitsi is happy just to carry on striking. He didn't even look for the choke area and just letting shots oh, go. Oh, this is cool, the referee's looking closely. The referee's oh, good giving. escape though, good escape. One of the escapes is to bring the legs up all the way over. Good work there. And the back door there. Shagayev doing really well. Good the same attempt as well. And again, the takedown from Guillotine. Yeah, double leg, turn the hips. Shayanitsa dominating this first round, though. Yeah, two nice takedowns, good positioning on the ground, and another third takedown. And yeah, make that number three. The body language of Chikayev there, he just sort of sunk back as he dropped to the floor. He's managed to get back to half guard, but his body language is definitely... And mounted again. Well, mounted twice, he'd be lucky to get out of it a, Big a second time. There, Ian. He's going to use the cage to push off, though. Shayanitsa needs to be careful. The oh, same again. Escape out the back door. There's still two minutes left in this first round, Ian. Well, he's got the arm trap. Shikayev rolls. Shayanitsa for his first fight is doing absolutely unbelievable. He's got the arm around the back and see how he's got his arm trapped. He's got the, the sleeve of Shayanitsa. Oh, sorry. Um, Shakayev. Yeah, well, he's just driving those shots in now. He's pinned the bottom leg, driving those punches in. If he can't defend himself, the referee will stop it, but he turns, he gets out of it just a little bit. Yeah, well, he's still got that arm underneath. And some call it the Dagestani handcuff, where you get around the back and control that arm. And he's working in with that left hook to the head. That's it. That's it. A great stoppage wow. there by the referee. He did it in the first round, Ian. What a way to make your debut in front of your home crowd. Gotcha, Shainitze. Round and pound, round number one. And he will be celebrated here with the local fans tonight. We see the replays, a pick up and slam at the corner team of Shainitsi picked him up and slammed him in celebration. Here we see the ground and pound elbows. Another pick up and slam. That was a fantastic performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee calls a stop to this contest by the way of ground and pound in four minutes of the very first round, declaring your winner in the red corner, Gucha Shayanitsa! A great win there, ground and pound, four minutes into round number one, and that's the first winner for the first fighter. Georgia, and let's see if that starts a roll for these hometown fighters.
Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC middleweight bout. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage in the blue corner, Haydar Akbari Dalestani. Haydar Akbari Dagestani. Presenting Turkey. He's making his way down to the blue corner. He has a professional mixed martial arts record of one win and no defeats. Darastani won that fight in the very first round. One minute 55 seconds, and he won that fight by rear naked choke. So he's the more experienced of the two fighters here. But he's only had two minutes of professional action. Ladies and gentlemen, now welcome his opponent to the red corner. Tony K. Gugwari! So his opponent making his way down to the red corner. Tanike Gigori. Gigori has been looking confident walking around the hotel all week. He was relaxed and focused at the weigh-ins. For a debut fighter, he did look like a fighter with a lot more experience. And again, I've talked about the fighters. When the whole local fighters, they come back, you put all your team there on a show, and it starts a winning role. He's already got his teammate Shainitsi back with a first round victory and I'm sure that will just spur these fighters on the pressure although slightly more experienced I'm sure the pressure here is on Darastani in the blue corner Ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the middleweight division. Now let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 26 years old. He weighed in at 83.9 kilograms. He stands 178 centimeters tall and has an unbeaten record of two wins with no losses. Representing Savalan fighters from Iran, please welcome Haydar. Akbari Dalestani! And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 25 years old. He weighed in at 83.9 kilograms. He stands 187 centimeters tall and is making his professional debut. Representing Garam Fight Club from Tbilisi, Georgia, Toniki Gigori! And your referee for this bout, Vusal Bayram. This is a professional middleweight contest. We have Daristani in the blue corner, Gigori in the red. Both fighters itching to get out here. A touch of gloves and we'll begin. Both fighters in the orthodox stance. The taller of the two men is Gigori. Using that reach to his advantage immediately, but shoots. Darastani, nice wrestling by Darastani. We were told he's a high level wrestler, Darastani. Well, he's just proven it by a great takedown, but Gaguri gets a nice reversal as well. Oh, unfortunately, didn't get all the way around. North south position now. Will he look for that lat choke in this position? He certainly didn't want any of the strike, and he backed off, backed off, looked. Oh, great work, he gets in top position. This is lovely. Oh, nice position. straight in demand. Lovely Powerful, hooks in. He gets one hook in. 
Darastari manages to take it out. He's got one hook in. Yeah, he's strong ground and pound. And oh, Darastari he's flattened out. He flattened he himself out the there. He likes to wrestle, but he didn't like the strike standing. Oh, there's like a real naked now. choke. He up. He taps. Wow. Another fantastic debut performance for a local fighter. Toniki Kigori with a standing rear naked choke victory here against the Iranian wrestler Darastani. Darastani came in here as an unbeaten fighter. Kigori was the unknown, but Kigori looked good with his stand up striking and he looked great with his striking on the ground. Good mixed martial artist, all-round fighter. And another good victory. And this role for the Georgian fighters is continuing. There we see the replay, the jump to the back, the hooks in, and a deep rear naked job. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, nine seconds of the very first round, we have a winner due to tap out from rear naked choke. In the red corner, Toniki Gigari! Gigori again getting these Georgian fans right behind him cheering and a fantastic win. Two first round victories for these Georgian fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC lightweight bout. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage in the blue corner, Govanj Dudayev. You're watching the Georgian Fighting Championship 17, Batumi Fight Night. Next up is a professional lightweight contest. And the first fighter making his way down to the cage is Gavansh Dadaev. Dadaev has a record of two wins and no defeats. His last fight was February of this year and he won that fight by a decision showing he could go all three rounds and continue the action. A very fast-paced fight. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome his opponent to the red corner, Kiyogi Abtiauri! So his opponent making his way down to the red corner, representing Georgia with a record of one win and no defeats, is Kiyogi Abtiauri. Abtiauri won that one Mixed Fights Last Contest to buy a rear naked choke submission. He 
also has a record of two wins, uh, two fights in boxing. He lost those two fights on points, suggesting he may be more of a grappler. He's going to have to really keep the pace up here against the Dyev. A solid three-round fighter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the lightweight division. Now let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 28 years old. He weighed in at 70.3 kilograms. He stands 177 centimeters tall and has an unbeaten record of two wins and no losses. Representing last round from Istanbul, Turkey, Guvanj Dadiyev. And now, welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 31 years old. He weighed in at 70.3 kilograms. He stands 176 centimeters tall and has a record of one win with one loss. Representing Gladiator from Tbilisi, Georgia, please welcome Georgi Apsiauri. And your referee for this bout, Suleiman Amaladean. Here we go, the lightweight professional contest at GFC 17. Absiori in the red, Dadaev in the blue. Touch of gloves and the action will begin. Dadaev starting in that southpaw stance. Oh, swinging for the fences. Abdi Sayuri looking for a knockout with the first punch there. He's loading up that right hand, Ian. Well, if he catches him with it, it can work. But obviously, you can overreach. Pull yourself onto something else that's coming towards you. Again, with that right hand. A nod of appreciation as well there, after Sayuri. Yeah, he's fallen short there, just with that right hand three times. Oh, that was powerful. So, as I said in the walkout, Apsiori lost his two boxing contests and he won his mixed martial arts by a rear naked choke so it'll be interesting to see if he loads that right hand into a clinch yeah whether he wants to stay standing oh nice nice duck under perfectly timed do they have now half guard position yes it was the day who actually initiated the clinch so absolutely looked like he was trying to attack for a guillotine but settled for underneath half guard do they have need to cross face, which he's doing now? That'll break the clinch, then drop down some elbows. Up against the fence here in front of us, Ian. Lightweight fighters. Happy so trying to get full guard, trying to get that leg round. Heads off the fence at least. See that smother attack. Trying to stop the breathing. Happy Sayuri. Haven't seen much of an attack on the ground so far. Half guard position, not one strike given. Well, the move back into open play now. We'll be interested to see with those open legs if you can get past. Well, I wouldn't argue with the referee if he stood up. Oh, now well, mounted. Now this is where the strike should come down. At that point, it just didn't seem like he was locking the leg in in half guard. And now he's underneath. That's the first strike. Well, the crowd's been loud for these local fighters, but it's quite quiet now, Ian. Trying to work a nice, strong base before he postures. Oh, but good work. Ati Sayuri, nicely done. Behind him. Well, Dudaya must not be comfortable with his base, because when he was in the half guard, he didn't throw any strike, and that tells me that he's not comfortable with a base. You start throwing punches, you're off balance. He gets onto the mount, he doesn't throw it. Well, he throws one punch and then gets dismounted. Yeah, too busy staying close and just trying to hold position. And as you said, the referee could have stood that back up, but he didn't need to absolutely reverse the position. Now he's in the full guard. Is he going to look to push him against the fence and work these ground and pound strikes? 
Well, we'll see more ground and pound in the first five seconds. Avanti Sauri is what we did it today, Ev. Well, inside the guard is a good position if you put someone against the fence here. Yeah, put their head up against the cage. 45 degree angle. They can't move the legs very well. Can't move the body very well. Trying to pass the side control now. Half guard position, full guard now. Yeah, so that attack there for the armbar just left a pass open there. But absolutely. He's back in the full guard. That's a nice right hand. Second one missed. See if he throws the leg and pass. He does. Butterfly. Well, good work. Back to his fight. Yeah, so good work. Nice technical stand up. Back into that southpaw stance. Moving around. He looks tired there. I was just going to say up. exactly the same. Ian. I was going to wait until you finish and say he actually looks a little bit tired from that wrestling. Nice left hook. There's his boxing coming into play now. And there's his kickboxing coming into play. Again, timed that right hand beautifully. But nice heavy work on the shoulder. He's picked Good. up though. Well, you can't deny the wrestling skill that he has. Just needs to sort out his balance when he's striking. Well, everybody's getting excited. It's very, very hard to apply the guillotine from side control. I wouldn't see impossible because I have seen people tap, but that's more so because it felt uncomfortable, not because it was working. Yeah, not an experienced fighter. As I do tell my fighters, that probably the biggest unforced error in jiu-jitsu is holding onto the head when they pass guard. Exactly. So here we have Dadaev looking to attack the back. He needs to get one of those hooks, and he's a bit high up. There's the and there's the buzz F, end of round one. Well, that was a strong round. Yeah, after the initial takedown, he was stuck underneath, but after he got this uh, real big bridge into the guard, Absiuri started to work well. He had the more powerful strikes, or probably the only strikes in the guard. Uh, it was more, it was more productive in what he was doing. Albeit we got two great slams down in the side control, but Absiuri was actually more productive in what he was doing. Yeah, definitely. He just had a bit more urgency in his work when he was on the floor, landing the shots. And he's damaged around the eye there. You see a cut above the left eye, uh, right eye, sorry. The corner working there. Just applying some Vaseline around the area. Corners are out and we're ready for round number two. Lightweight professional contest, absolutely in at the red. Absolutely looks more fresher, if you ask me. I know you can't really tell by the fighter's actions, but he does look the fresher of the two. Yeah, well, we both spotted the body language when they got back up to the feet and today have looked tired and look at him now, jaws open. He's breathing heavily. Absolutely, I'm sure as well. He's going to have this crowd behind him. He likes to load up these shots, whether it's the low kick or the right hand. He puts everything into it. Slightly steadier start to round yeah, two. Very steady. Abdesayu reaching down for the leg as well. Needs to be careful of that. In case he does a question mark, kick comes up high. Tape just coming loose on the right glove of Absuri. Referee needs to keep an eye on that, just so it doesn't catch into the eyes. We don't want anything that could stop the action. Well, trying different things. Dyev may be the tired of the two, but he's definitely trying now. After Saur, he just seems to have gone a little bit quiet. Yeah, he does. He's maybe waiting for the action to. Referee quickly unravels that and we're back to today in the southpaw stance and he did well, I think, throwing that left hand over and into the clinch. Absolutely, really, he is really he, he can't sit on his laurels and he has to he has to push forward. He may he may have even lost the first round just due to the fact of the takedowns, although he's more active in top position. 
He did get taken down twice. And this time oh, he's gone. Saying this is actually a little bit better. This is better. Now this could be applied from this position. Yes, oh, he slips out. out. Difficult with the arm in guillotine if you don't get it quite right. Just to be careful not to burn his arms out because it's not going to work when his legs are on the inside like this. No, and that arm's in there blocking that. They're very hard to apply the guillotine when the arm's locked inside the elbow, just stopping any elevation of the elbow. Nice elbow down in the position from Dadaev. Well, let's see what the striking is like from the guard, Dadaev. We've seen zero strikes, maybe one strike from the guard. Well, or from the ground, I should say. I think we're going to see more from underneath from Absiuri as he tries to work those legs up. You can see the welt on the left leg of Absiuri. Those powerful low kicks from Dadaev. And that can actually stop you working the guard work as easily when you've got a big welt there. Yeah, the diver is not active enough for me on the ground in all positions. Yeah, definitely. You'd think after the, the round where he could have dropped the first round, you just have a bit of assertiveness, just a bit more get up and go to do something once he gets into this top position. Oh, bar attempt. He needs to just throw that leg over. He nearly did. Well, at least he's trying. Yeah, he seemed to have the arm locked as well. He just he hesitated really there, Ian. 90 seconds left in the second round. Well, it's perfectly legal. I don't know why he's stopping him. That's a legal yeah. elbow. Yeah, the referee. There's nothing wrong with that elbow. You're allowed wins. to elbow the top of the head. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's the back of the head you can't elbow. Yeah, the referee getting involved there where he didn't need to. But looking for this sort of flower sweep attempt. Yeah, I was going to see trying to sweep. Oh, could get the arm. No, he missed it. Works back in towards him. There's and the reversal again. Reversal. Using the head. Straight well, into the Well, let's strikes. see what the mental attitude of Dadaev is like. And this is the difference, the solid strikes in that position. Roll for a knee bar, he might have it. Yeah, he went for the rolling knee bar. He can switch to a heel hook. Slightly out of position now. But like you said, again, heel hook is available. Now his leg has come out now. Well, they're in that 50-50. And powered over again. It's absolutely just precious forward. That was a big right hand, Ian. Dadaev did not like that shot. Oh, mounted again. Oh, it's right at the end come. of the round, though. His corner should be screaming at him to flurry here, work some shots. Even if he doesn't finish him, at least it could wear him out by the, these elbows that's well, going down. With this body language, I don't think he wants to come out for the third round here. Yeah, he just lay underneath and took those shots. Yeah, he's going to come out very, very tired in round three. even get up off his knees he just sat back against the fence and as we watch the replay you're gonna see why even in the takedowns he's still threatening from underneath his gorgi Abtiori there we saw him pull out always striking lovely mixed martial arts as he sets up every transition with punches and again in this top 50 50 position he drives the strikes down clears the leg and back into the mount position well as you know Ian, i'm a big fan of ground and power yeah you know eventually yeah. What do you think there? The difference there, surely with those two fighters, was the ground I think and now, in this third round, I don't think it's a skill game, I think it's a mind game. I think Abdi Sayuri will just overwhelm him with his mental attitude, and look what he's doing, bouncing around as if to say, I'm ready, come on, this is only round three. Yeah, I love the way, as you were saying that, he did that, he walked to the centre, bouncing like he had all the energy in the world, as his opponent just looks deflated in his own corner. So here we go, the third and final round. This lightweight contest. See the blood all in the beard there of the Dayev. He took some heavy shots at the end of that round and he's cut on the cheek. Perhaps he comes out on top. 
Just went out from a little bit out of distance there. Yeah, he shouldn't look too far out. He should use that boxing skill that he has. We know he has it. I think a few punches on the correct spot. That'll tire him out even more. Ah, uh, he does not need that. No, he just seemed tired with that kick. It was, again, a lackluster kick, and then he gets caught. If you're going to throw kicks, you have to throw with intentions. Left hooks from on his back from Absaouri. Working constantly, but he needs to be careful. He looks like he's looking for the mount. But I have, although we haven't seen much ground and pound, if he stays in top position, he could win the round. Yeah, blood's dripping from that left cheek. Absolutely, keeping that knee shield in. Absolutely, he needs to try and get up. He needs to do everything he can to get back to his feet. Yeah, from here, if he can just get some frames and get that head away. Again, he settles for going to his back and trying to get that knee shield back in. Well, the corner are screaming for work. My Georgian isn't the best, but I think they definitely want him to start doing something here. Ian. They know it's too close to just lie on your back. Yeah, you can't. You, you've, got, you've got to work. You've got to move. Now he's got a, a little bit of a chance now. He's got his back up against the cage. He needs to get his hips up against there as well. Well, as I see him move his hips up there, the Dyer pulls his hips off the cage. That stopped him getting back to his feet. The thing I, is, he's still got that overhook in. If he could just pressure down and try to get to his knees. He's in mount position now, although he's not in yeah. full mount. He is now. He is now. Well, after... So, well, but we do know he doesn't really throw much from this position, so he's got two and a half minutes here. Where well, what an unorthodox. We're getting back to your feet, but he's managed to avoid it. Oh, he he's come out the back door. Now we're going to see some action. He's got two minutes now to try to look for a finish. I still oh, think... he got a little bit too excited then. A couple of left-handed strikes would have worked beautifully there. If he gets to his knees, I'm sure he still is in a crucifix position. I think he's got both arms wrapped up. I can't tell if the left arm of the dive is wrapped by those legs. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah, it is. He could maybe, if he could turn to his knees, he's in a sort of crucifix. You can see it's like, it's like a, a top crucifix controlling those arms. And this is a difficult position out there. He's just allowed that. Yeah, he's not going to get it now. Pulled out. He's grabbing all of his own shorts, which is perfectly legal. You can't grab your opponent's shorts, but you can grab your own. He um, could try and turn him up. What, what's he doing? He's allowed this, to do that. Yeah, the he's allowed to do that. That's another mistake from that's his referee. That's two mistakes the referee's made. Yeah. Well, again, frustrating, but here we are. Tadayev with that S grip to the back. Nice work to pin against the fence there again. Absolutely looking. Pressuring that head down. Will he work some strikes now? He's got the leg. He's going to drive on that single, and he does. Yeah, well, the wrestling is really good, Tadayev. He's ground and pound. There's a lot to be desired. Solid punches there. But there, things like that, oh, that was a nice turn, beautiful. Little things like that, like showing that you want to finish the fight, will render more points in the eyes of the judges. Nice knee to the body as he stands over his opponent. Again, looking for that neck. 30 seconds, I would go for it. Oh, he's cradled the head and the neck, and then back into that front headlock position. Absolutely, has been the one looking to finish at least. And he looks tired as he sprawls heavy with his legs. Final seconds, round three. After Sayuri just seems to be doing enough. He seems to be gaining that little bit upper hand. And now we have it, Ian. We do. Well, that's the end of three rounds. I do think the local fighter here has won again. That was a tough contest. Some 
nice takedowns early on, but Dadaev really just looked like the wrestling was the only thing he had. He had no strikes on the floor, not much of the striking standing. This was a nice little turn, but again with that turn, Dadaev managed to get himself back to his knees and then back into the top position. So good work. It'd be interesting to see how our judges have scored this fight. Looking at the stand-up, the wrestling, the ground, and obviously following the judging criteria. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a unanimous decision in favor of your winner. In the red corner, Georgi Absoluti! A tough fight there for Georgi Absoluti, but definitely a well-deserved win. Really made to work there from first belt to last. I said in the walkout to Dyer was a three round fight and he showed he was, but he was just a step behind. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC bout in the featherweight division. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage in the blue corner, Torgon Asterian. And now, welcome his opponent to the red corner, Hamad Gunayev! So his opponent making his way down to the red corner, representing Georgia, Hamad Gunayev. Gunayev has a professional record of three wins and one defeat. 
experience of the two fighters here as a professional, but actually Asatrian has more fights in total with his amateur credentials. A good matchup here. Two young fighters early in their careers. We've seen Genaev before. He's tall and rangy for the featherweight. Is it good for the striking? A Citrian, good wrestling. Will he try to clinch early on? Try to get past that range. As we get to these more experienced fighters now, very much the corners will be working strategies that can see the experience. They'll have seen the fighters. Debut fighters, a little bit of the unknown. These two, there's plenty of footage now where you can watch the fighters see how they behave, what they favor, where the weaknesses may be. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the featherweight division. Now let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 22 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 173 centimeters tall and has an unbeaten record of two wins and no losses. Representing Pestorian Dojo FC from Armenia, Togom Asatrian. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 24 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 178 centimeters tall and has a record of three wins with one loss. Representing Batumi Fight Academy from Batumi, Georgia. Please welcome Hamad Gudayev. And your referee is Fusal Bayramov. So here we go, the featherweight professional contest. Ganaev in the red, the local fighter. And a Citrian in the blue. Citrian has looked cool, calm and collected all week. Nice inside low kick to start things off from Ganaev, the taller of the two fighters, as I said. A Citrian, I guess, may want to clinch with that good wrestling pedigree. A Citrian looks like he has a strong physique. So with that wrestling style that he has, he should be able to control this fight if it does get into the clinch position. I mean, just look at the traps on that guy. Yeah, as I said in the walk down, he's a very big for the weight as a, uh, as a featherweight. He was a lightweight as an amateur and a good lightweight amateur. Well, I've got to be honest, Ian, I looked at him and then I looked at my card and saw featherweight and I thought, wow, this man yeah. was cut. That was a fall from the kick. Yeah, big, strong, solid base. And you see him there stalking forwards. But Ganaev managed to get to his feet, get back at range. Ganaev's fainting and coming forward, but he's not letting go with any shots. That was better. Oh, Left that was up nice. That right. was nice. I do like the hands followed by the legs, as long as it's got power. Swing and a miss. Yeah, nice mix of kicks now coming from Ganaev. The this thing is, is he's he timing them beautifully as well. He's timed them on the step in. The Satrian steps in, and as he steps down with that weight on his leg, Ganaev is actually chopping away at them. Yeah, he's finding it very hard to deal with these fast strikes that are coming from different angles. A lovely inside low kick, just taking him off his step. But like we said, he likes his wrestling. I, I just don't understand why. I just don't understand why he hasn't tried to clinch right now. I think he's dealing with the, uh, the distance. 
He's struggling that inside low kick. Such a good weapon. You can see the welt on the yeah, outside of the leg. Yeah, look at the welts. I can see that. Nice overhand, beautifully. And that right cross, the straight right, I think is what he's worried about and why he's not coming in. The he thing was is, with it if he's on. a good wrestler, he should be able to shoot underneath those punches. There we go. He tried, oh, that was it. That's his chance to get him. He does. Well, but it doesn't look like it's going to be for long because... He tried to hold the two-on-one -on -one there on the arm. Then he's got the overhook. Yeah, that length, that those jabs, the, the straight shots are just keeping. Oh, I can look at that. I love that. I absolutely love that. That was a chopping kick there, Ian. It's a popular move over here, the left hook followed by the right leg kick. The Satrian is having a difficult time with the striking ability right now. He is, and that was a nice long straight left right hand, and then a spinning hook kick just fell short. Big shots. Again, moving round the outside. Nice uppercut there. A lovely right uppercut from the outside from Ganaev, who's starting to mix up these shots even more. Straight jab. A Citroen just he's on the end of the shots. It just looks like he's blinking and just thinking, what do I do? What's coming next? It's a clinical wear down, to be honest. He's wearing him down with every single shot. He's not looking for that one punch. He's not looking for that one punch knockout. Oh, but there we go. As I see it, he gets an overhand. Nice body shot. Yeah, beautiful. The vocabulary of shots here. He's throwing every single shot in the book. Left up to the body. Clean right hand. Spinning back kick. And again, and there's blood pouring from the left eye. He's looked up at the screen there to see if How he can see left. the blood. Good defence. Well, that's, that's what he needs to get to this takedown. He needs to get the takedown. He's lost the round. There's no doubt about that. But he needs to get the takedown just to have that little bit of confidence in what he's doing. The referee was looking on careful there because blood is streaming from that left eyebrow. Lovely, nice work here. Again, in the clinch. Ganaev is looking strong. Against the wrestle, he's dropped down for the legs. Can he get the takedown? Finish the well, round. Wouldn't it? Oh, he got the trip there. They need to get the inside trip. This would be a perfect end to the round for him. He's took down the wrestle. Oh, there we go. He's in top right position. on the 10 second knock. And that tells a story. Big elbow, left hook, and a kick. And that was a certain dominance at the end of the round. He showed him, I can't just, it's not just that I can strike, that, I can that wrestle was, as well. That was the clearest 10-9 round I've seen in a long time. Would that be enough to score at 10 8 Ian? I don't think so because there wasn't really a finish or a knockdown initiated in that, in that round. If he was close to finishing him, if he actually knocked him down, then yes, a 10, 10 8 But his pure domination, so I feel, is a 10-9. I think it's going to be hard for anyone to disagree with there, Ian. And that was the desperation attack on the leg. But even with such a good entry into the leg, he could not finish that takedown. It couldn't have been a better first round for Ganaev. Targum Asatrian. The experienced amateur, number seven lightweight amateur in the Caucasus, took a beating in that first round. Well, if I was in his corner, I'd be telling him to take the guy down. You cannot afford to stand and take another beating like this. That cut is looking pretty bad above his eye as well. Yeah, I think he's just been wary of the strikes. He needs to just initiate, close distance, and get the takedown. So here we go, round number two. Ganaev in the red. Citrian in the blue. Ganaev, a clean first round for him. Clean, sharp strike. That's what he needs to do, but good defense. Great defense. How disheartening when you do exactly what the corner's told you and it doesn't work. Well, there's other ways to get your opponent down instead of shooting. He could close the distance and get a clinch in the middle. He could close the distance push him so that his back is against the cage and try a takedown that way. 
Again, leading with that left hook to the body with a long reach of Ganaev. Satrian needs to throw punches, though. He needs to throw punches and then clinch, just like that. But he's got to clinch when he does it. He landed the left hook there, but it's just bounced off the chin or the cheek of Ganaev, who is really pressuring forwards now as he looks for these shots. Body kick. Spinning oh, back. Beautiful work. Ganaev can see the blood there streaming down from the face. He smells the blood. He's going for gold here. Like a shark. He smells blood like oh, a nice. right hand left hook. He's not rushing in, Ian. Do you know what? But if you could describe him. a clinical dismantle, yeah. a clinical dismantle, yeah. this is what you would show. Yeah, that's, uh, I think we thought at the same time, Ian, he's just absolutely breaking him down. He's fighting like a seasoned pro as well. You wouldn't think this is only his fifth professional MMA fight. Oh! Oh! This could be the end! We're only halfway oh, through the fight nice here. nice left hook! Defended the takedown, bro! Oh, oh that oh, could be that, illegal! That, that may be yeah. illegal! I'd, want, I'd have to watch the replay. Oh, man. my word, was he on three points? I think he might have been back to his feet here. He was getting up. He was definitely in the flow of the action. I'd have to see a replay, and it was very difficult to tell there. So here we've got the medics looking to get into the cage. Now, I do think you can see there Ganaev saying it was legal. He was getting up. It was, we need to see a replay so we can actually see when the impact happened. Was he on three points of contact? The referee is going to let it continue, I think. Well, he's got an award of point deduction. I'm not saying that it was illegal, but if the referee is stating that it was an illegal kick, he needs to give him a point deduction. If not, that means it's not he's, an illegal kick. And he's indecisive with it. We need to watch it on the screen. Yeah. So he stopped it, he's let him get checked. So it, the referee clearly thinks it was an illegal shot. Yeah, yeah. I don't think a points are going to make any difference in this fight, so I don't think a point deduction matters, but officially he needs to deduce Well, if he can't continue after five minutes, or if he says he can't continue before the five minutes, it could be a, a DQ. I'm very interested to see this replay. Well, the referee's clearly telling him that he thought he was on two knees. And for those listening, the three-point position there is the point deducted. A three-point position on a fighter is the soles of his feet. Now you have to put your, your palms flat down. But the soles of your feet and your hand down. Or if you're down on one knee, so that you have one foot, one knee, and your other foot is on the floor, that's three points. It's classed as a down fighter. So it'll be good to see. If the fighter is in a three-point position, but starts to get back to his feet and he lifts that knee off the floor, then it is legal to kick him in the head, and that's what we need to see. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll see that at the end, but for now, again, we go back to Ganaev defending the takedowns and working sharp clinical oh! strikes. Oh! Well, this might have woke him up a little bit. Hang on, there's something wrong. There's something wrong, he's broke his jaw, I think. That's it, it's over. Yeah. Wow, it's over. Now, the, the, as the rules go in, I know the referee let it start again, but that, if that broken jaw was caused by that kick, can they argue that that's a no contest? Yeah, it is. It's, it's a, that's a tough one to call. I mean, I'm going in the cage now to announce the winner, so 
please let me know what you saw. Yeah. If there's any replays, well, I'm sure look at oh, it. Oh, I'm not going nowhere. I want to see this. Let's see this. Oh. I want to see this. There's the action. Spinning head kick there. Kicked him back. That was a beautiful, solid spinning hook kick if ever I've seen one. Then we see this takedown, and then what happens is Ganaev steps back. Yeah, he's on a three point. Yeah, still it's on illegal. Three points. It's it illegal. So here we see the shot again. So again there. And I have celebrates the win, but there does seem to be a bit of a conference going on inside the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, after three minutes, five seconds of the second round, the referee draws a stop to this contest due to a TKO. And your winner in the red corner, Hamad Gunayev. Your winner by TKO on the official decision is Hamad Gunayev. It was a clinical beatdown. It was unfortunate it landed that shot. However, the fight continued, he landed more, and the referee stopped the fight. Four wins out of four now for the Georgian fighters. Good performances from them. And will this keep rolling? I believe the next fight we have a last minute fighter, so it might be Georgia versus Georgia coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thank you to our sponsors, GFC 17, our main sponsor, Eclipse Hotel and Casino, Metro City, Batumi Fight Academy, and Vitamin E .ge. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC Bantamweight bout. So please welcome your fighter in the blue corner, Otari Shakvashvili! Here we go. About number five on the card. Otari Shakvashvili representing Georgia. He's making his debut here in a last minute contest. He stepped in after an injury to his, the Egyptian fighter, Ali El Khatib. A very tough fight here for a debut fight, and it takes a lot of guts for a fighter to just step in. One week's notice, clearly fit in the gym, as he's made weight, and made weight well.
professional mixed martial arts, professional fight sports of boxing. Couldn't live without these fighters, have the guts to step in last minute. And now welcome his opponent to the red corner, Dimitri Bogvadza. So his opponent making his way down to the red corner. With a record of one win and one defeat is Dimitri Bogvadze. Now Bogvadze has been preparing for that Egyptian fighter, number eight, eight featherweight in Egypt, who was on a, had a five fight winning streak in his first five fights, looking at a particular style of striker. Now he's up against a debut fighter he doesn't know very much about. And all he does know is this guy was willing to step in last minute. A lot to play on the mind of a fighter leading up to the fight. Two professional contests, one win, one loss, a win coming by head kick KO. But then he lost by knockout in his last fight. However, he come back, and I say often it's how you come back from your loss that define you as a fighter. He was coming back from that knockout loss to fight a guy who had five wins from striking. So, real guts. He hasn't got that opponent now. He's got a very different fighter in Atari Chakvashvili. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC fight in the bantamweight division. Now let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 20 years old. He weighed in at 61.2 kilograms. He stands 172 centimeters tall and is making his professional debut. Please welcome, from Kurujani in Georgia, please welcome, Otari Jadvashvili. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 24 years old. He weighed in at 61.2 kilograms. He stands 179 centimeters tall and has a record of four wins. No losses with one draw. Representing Tbilisi from Georgia, Dimitri Bogvadza. And your referee for this bout, Suman. Almudian. Bantamweight professional contest here. Chakvashvili in the blue. Bolkvadze in the red. Expect a fast start from these bantamweights. A touch of gloves and we see Bolkvadze in the southpaw stance. Chakvashvili in the orthodox kicks early on from Bokvatsi. Yeah, Bokvatsi, that southpaw stance will give dividend to that big, powerful left kick to the liver. Big favourite. Oh, he switches stance back to orthodox. Not for very long, Not yet. for long, though, no. And we get the clinch. Nice knee. Yes, yeah, solid clinch here from Bokvatsi. Keeping control of the debut fighter. Bolvadze could do with it. Oh, he's oh pure strength from good wrestling. I was going to say he could do with an outside trip that would pull the legs away. Jack Vashvili now on his back, half guard, now side control. Scrambles well, he's but he's in. Oh, that was tight. That's tight that, he taps immediately. He taps immediately. Wow. Fast, Super aggressive. fast finish. He saw the opportunity for the neck there. Got his arm deep underneath into that S grip and pulled the submission tight. He had been training for a striker. And it's very clear there. He'd worked that wrestling into submission. That is a fast first round guillotine you see there. So tight. He got the knuckles right up past the shoulder line. Lock that in tight. No chance there for Jack really to do anything except tap.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, three seconds of the very first round, we have a winner due to tap out from a guillotine in the red corner, Dimitri Bogvadza. Dimitri Bogvadza with another win, now two and one as a professional. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC bantamweight bout. So please welcome your fighter to the blue corner, Guvanj Klaichev. You're watching Georgian Fighting Championship 17, Butami Fight Night. Next up, we have more bantamweight action. And the first fighter making his way down to the cage is Gavanj Kalajev. Kalajev is making his debut here. He's 166 centimeters tall, 24 years old. And he is representing Turkmenistan. And he's been another fighter to have looked fired up and experienced his walk around the hotel very, very confident. The cauliflower ears show signs of much, much mat time. And he has certainly not come over from Turkmenistan to lose. And now, welcome his opponent to the red corner, Roland Plazinikovi! Well, his opponent steadily walking down into the cage is Roland Plazinikovi. Plazinikovi has a record of one win and three defeats. Win coming by guillotine choke submission early in the fight. He also has a loss by guillotine and two losses on points. Kushnikov may have a losing record, but he is dangerous. He's very dangerous in the clinch against the fence. He's also got the benefits this local crowd behind him as he takes on the debut fighter from Turkmenistan. Interesting to see there, Kuznikov is wearing the cycling shorts. He's not supposed to have shorts to go past the knee line. They should be pulled up to the knee line. That's why the assistant referee is having a word with him here now. Just 
check in because of these draws, I something. told actually by the officials at ringside it's not actually down to the shorts so they're going to allow him with the shorts past the knees he's come out without a groin guard which is certainly something no fighter should forget so Rola Pustikova my apologies the officials are letting him fight with the long shorts as long as he puts in the groin guard and as this goes on See on my screen a very excited Gavanch Kalaitev stalking up and down, staying low, throwing punches, and he looks very focused and composed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the bantamweight division. Now let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 24 years old. He weighed in at 61.2 kilograms. He stands 166 centimeters tall and is making his professional debut. He is representing GT MMA fighting from Turkmenistan. Please welcome Gervanj Plajev. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 25 years old. He weighed in at 61.2 kilograms. He stands 175 centimeters tall and has a professional record of two wins and three losses. Representing Batumi Fight Academy from Batumi, Georgia, please welcome Roland Plesnikovi. And your referee for this bout, Hussal Bayramov. 
happen to win professional contest here. Plushnikovi in the red, Klaichev in the blue. Klaichev has been stalking back to the forwards while we had that little mix up with the shorts. And it's a spinning back fist from Klaichev and then straight into the single leg attack and then switches to a double. Well, I was going to say that little bit of a, a hold up that could have got the fight as wound up. And by the start, it looks like it has. Kovi, I'm not sure if you knew what was going on. He was wearing long pants. He has his knees strapped up, as you can see. And I don't think he wanted his opponent to see that. That's why he wore long johns, basically, underneath his shorts. Now, the rules state here that you cannot wear long pants. And the referee was adamant that he cannot wear them. On top of, he also forgot his groin guard. Yeah, so a couple of mistakes there on the way, and they probably should have been checked backstage, but... Klaichev all the way through that stayed focused and composed and he's had a good start so far to this fight. Oh, he tried to drop a guillotine, I think. half hour guillotine as it was, but now he's in full guard. Well, we already saw Plushnikov looking to attack from guard, but this time his head's up against the fence. He's still working the angle. Oh, nice hammer fists. Good ground and pound from top position. There we go again. Strong hammer fist. Oh, they're really strong. Trying to hammer fist from the bottom himself. Plus the Kovi. Yeah, managed to get back to the full guard now. Trying to control the head. But watch again for Klaichev to break free. Work those strikes. Well, the crowd are shouting Kovi. Plus the Kovi. Yeah, he's trying to get There's the angle arm on the armbar. Well, Klaichev, very clever, very strong, he's very active. Punched his way out of that armbar there, Ian. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Definitely not, that's not, why not it's mixed martial arts and not grappling. Try to submit me, I will hit you. So here we go, Klaichev on top, still having his head controlled. Plushnikov is controlling the head. He is looking to work these angles. He's got an active guard. But oh, that was a solid elbow. Yeah. Plushnikov did not like that one bit. The guard is wide open. There's blood now coming from the forehead of Plushnikov. That was good kick back there. Plushnikov back to his feet. Saving grace, I feel. Yeah, but I think you saw there, how's that affected his head? He just touched Look the blood. Look at the blood at the back of his ear. Or is it his actual ear that's bleeding? I think it could be his ear, the blood. I think it's popped, yeah. So Cauliflower ear has popped. Nice front kick though, keeping Klaichev at distance. Klaichev comes back with a spinning back fist. Klaichev opens his arms out, come on, what you got for me? Yeah, watch for a level change. He's trying to get... Push Nikovi to come on to him fast, and I think he's going to attack for the legs again. Well, there's that duck under, he missed it that time. He's growing in confidence with a strike, and that was a nice right hand. He's missed with the spinning attempts, but. Push Nikovi looks tired as he steps forwards. Kicks to the body. Both guys look a little bit tired, to be honest. But what a furious start. That spinning back fist attempt goes high. Pushnikov is still coming oh, forward. That's a nice right right cross. That one did connect. That shook him to his boots here, and he's backing off now. He's on his bike. Good defense. Nice cross face. Works the underhooks, needs to turn away from the cage. Do not let him get his hands together, he does. Ah! All that hard work, but good wrestling. Yeah. Klaichev now in the full guard. Well, Klaichev was rocked from that right cross. He managed to get the takedown, he's on top, and his head will be getting clear now. But there is blood steeping from the eye, dripping from the, the top of the left eye of Klaichev. Both fighters now bleeding from these strikes. It's been a brutal first round. Without a doubt, it's been a brutal first round. <laughs> Doing just enough to stay there. Referee is telling him he wants to see action. There's an armbar attempt. Again, fast, sharp transition. Yeah, the arm is bent. It's out. The elbow's free. 
steps over with some strong elbows again in the last seconds. But good work there from Pushnikovi as wow, well. Looking what dangerous. A strong round or Klaichev, I feel. May have took that round just with the strong round and pound that he has. Klaichev in the wrong corner there, Ian. I, did, I think he got rocked with that right cross. <laughs> well, if he doesn't know which corner he's going to, maybe he did. I will see a replay of that action packed first round. We saw armbar attempts from Pushnikov, and we saw brutal ground and pound, solid shots, a nice stand back up there, and it was that right cross that shook Klaichev to his boots. At the end of round number one, it still looked like Klaichev was rocked. He walked back to the wrong corner. And for me, Pushnikov looks a lot better than his one and three record suggests. Without a doubt it does. Damaged face for Klaichev underneath the left eye. Bleeding from the cauliflower ear is Plushnikovi as we start round number two. Well, I would rather bleed from the cauliflower, albeit very painful, than bleed from around the eye. Yeah, well, he'll be sleeping on the right-hand side of his head for a few weeks, probably. And again, you see Klaichev on his bike, sort of backpedalling around the outside of the cage. Oh, he ducked his head down. I thought that kick was going to go for the head. Luckily, it went to the body, and he managed to get a takedown out of it. Well, Pushtikov has managed to keep his legs in between them, but only in the half guard, I think, now. They're pressured in against the fence, very close to our vantage point. You can see there Plushnikovic desperately holding on to the head and arm. The referee might have to stand this up because there's not yeah, a lot the, of action. Th this is right at the beginning of the round as well. Near the end of the round, last time the referee let it go on, but if there's just short little sharp shots to the body, fair enough you could see that he's still working. Oh, he tries to kick back again, nice! Sprawls out, not sprawling enough though. Yeah, I think he got tied up there. The fence was in the way for a heavy sprawl. I don't think he realised until it was too late, and then his hips were pulled back away from the fence by Klaichev. Every time Klaichev gets that head clear, he gets a shot down. Hammer fist coming down, back to his feet, good work. Well, I wonder why Klaichev allowed him to get up so easy. He may be tired, he just wanted, didn't want to scramble for the hips, did he? And then looking for that right hand, he would measure that one up. Oh, oh he's slipping, he points to the ground. Yeah, a little bit too telegraphed. Looking for that front headlock now. He needs to wrap his legs around, there we go. There we go. He needs, if he's going to get the arm he's in well by get, He's going to tap. Oh, he raised he his hands to tap. He needs to put the head weight over the head. Yeah, he needs to put his head over the shoulders. Thumb goes just, up. I thought he was going to tap right at the beginning. I think he's just the, the pressure he's is over cool. to he the wrong side. He needs, yeah, he needs to. Instead of leaning back like that, he needs to get chest over the top of his shoulders. Yeah. At the moment, he's just laying flat, and you're not going to finish anyone with an arm in guillotine nah, laying the, flat. Oh, the chin is through as well. So there, plenty of room. But he's still threatening, he's still... Plus the core of his arms. Oh, that's better. Now he needs to go over the top. That's it, yeah. put the arms out. The arm, the arm is free, the head is out. So Govanj Klaichev. He did look relaxed in that position. I think he knew there was no real threat, but he needed to get the head clear that he has done. And as we've seen earlier on, if he can get the arm clear, he will start striking again. And he's got very powerful hammer fists from this position. Second round, Georgian Fighting Championship 17. Klaichev of Turkmenistan, Plushnikovi of Georgia. 
Well, not a bad call from the referee. Action, but very limited. That's for Pushnikov now to use that height, use that reach, and try and land that long right hand again. Point oh, with a left. spinning back fist. He waited too long to throw that shot. Got caught with a spinning back fist. Yeah, it was pouring with a left. It was obvious the right was going to come. And instead, Klaichev with a spinning hook kick. Well, a few of those low kicks might work. It'd be good for Klaichev to start to land the low kicks and try to put push Nikovi onto the back foot. As nasty as it sounds, I would have attacked that bad knee, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's always a temptation when you see strapping on someone if oh, they've got an injury. Doubt. Without a doubt. Would you call it gamesmanship? Well, I'd rather go three minutes to 15, that's the, <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> Again, looking for those spinning attacks out of distance is Klaichev. This time he screws it up as a corkscrew uppercut. So two rounds of action there. Success for both guys in different areas. Gavansh Kalaichev has been on top position, he's got the takedowns. There's been a real threat of the Armin guillotine and the guillotine attempts for Pushnikova. Kovi needs to stop headhunting. Although the knockout will be great, he can get the knockout by throwing strikes without trying to bomb that big right hand in. Because every yeah. time he throws it, Klaichev is ducking underneath yeah. and just getting a clinch. It's, it, it's like he's just setting it up with a point jab and then really, uh, what we call it, telegraphing the shot. Pepper a few punches in, nice and light, and then throw the big one. I'm sure that is exactly what the corner will be telling him. He raises his hands, he tries to get the crowd going behind him. He wants the support of these local fans. And we're into round number three. Klaichev comes forward now. It's Klaichev pouring with the jab. Oh, that's a nice double. Oh, triangle attempt. Oh, switch for that sort of rubber guard holding behind the leg. But there, breaks free again is Klaichev. That underhook of your own leg is good for just keeping the posture down. But Klaichev easily broke out, head up and striking oh, again. Oh, oh. That was a powerful shot that missed. Again, loads up that right hand. Now, the difference with Klaichev loading up the right hand on the ground and pound is that your opponent's fairly static. Well, he's past the half guard now, Ian. He let him get up just so he could get another takedown. Looking for that short elbow and then the hammer fist. Short elbow with the left, hammer fist with the oh, right. He's trapped. Not for long. Yeah, Pushnikov, he did not want any of that. He got the arm straight out, back to guard. Even from that position there, again, as unfair as it seems, I would be elbowing back onto that bad knee. <laughs> Brutally. And yeah, but but yeah, the, the yeah, fight is a fight. Now, if, if he causes pain or damage to that knee, obviously there's damage already there, then when they stand back to the feet, he's not going to be able to put any pressure on that leg. You know, definitely, I think that it's a fight and you do what it takes to win within the rules, and that is within the rule set. You get paid the same money whether you fight for one minute or 15 minutes. That is very true. Three minutes left, and it's oh, big, powerful nice. shots. Big, strong ground and pound. Gavanch Klaichev of Turkmenistan come here to win. Big ground and pound punches. Well, if it goes the distance, 
after this performance. I think Klaichev could get that win. Well, we've not seen a loss from a fighter from Georgia against an international opponent yet tonight. Well, it will do well for the Turkish fighters here to get this win, give boost their morale a little bit. Klaichev, powerful hammer fist down the middle. Blood pouring from the ear again of Pushnikovi. Trying to work that armbar again, using the cage to get that leg across. The referee pulled his leg out from inside the cage, and it oh strong left, left position. Hands. Oh, he's just covering up there, Ian. Needs to be careful. Two minutes to go. The referee was looking on carefully there as all those shots landed, unanswered shots. But then he came back with a flurry of his own, albeit from underneath half guard. It is a big down from top position right now. Plus, the Kovi might be firing back a little bit, but it's it's within Vien, I think. Push the Kovi back to the full guard. Watch him look to try to work those legs up. I feel he does need a submission finish to win this fight. Yeah, I, he needs a finish. He needs a finish for sure. And he's not going to knock him out from under there. With all the powerful hammer fists in the world. Plus, the Kovi's corner are going absolutely crazy. Yeah, Pushnikov, he got the overhook there and looked up at the referee. I don't know whether he was maybe hoping for a stand-up, but it's not going to happen. He needs to look for a submission. He needs to stop throwing punches from his back. Earlier on in the round, earlier on in the fight, they may work, but when you lose in this fight, he needs to try a submission and get back to his feet. Big hammer fist down to the body, then the head. Mixing these hammer fists up. The solid shots, he still looks fit and strong. strong. Yeah. The strikes are coming back, he's fighting, but he's fighting a losing battle here, he's rolling Pushnikovi. Yeah, he's fighting to the end. Unfortunately, not fighting for the win unless we are seeing something totally different. Oh, that was another big hammer fist there, seemed to flatten Pushnikovi out. The dying seconds now, right in the corner of Pluznikovi, and they are going absolutely crazy. Last five seconds. It's been a brutal, bloody fight, Ian, and it's going to go to points. As we watch the replay here, lovely double-legged teardown. The attack then from guard from Pluznikovi. The fought off by Klaichev, who hammers powerful ground and pound in. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges scorecard for a unanimous decision in favor of your winner in the blue corner, Guvaj Klaichev. He came here as a debut fighter, the only fighter from Turkmenistan. And he has done the unexpected, a great win for him here. Well fought and well deserved.
And ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC heavyweight bout. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage in the blue corner, Peria Namate. You're watching Georgian at Fighting Championship 17. And the next fighter making his way down to the cage is a heavyweight. This was a heavyweight matchup, matched at 100 kilograms. This fighter, Peria Nemate, is ranked number 19 heavyweight in the Caucasus. He has a record of one win and three losses. With two wins in a submission only competition to add to that record. As we know with these Iranian fighters, Solid, strong wrestling, and he uses that to win by submission. And now, welcome his opponent to the red corner, Georgi Kota Ashvili. So his opponent. Georgi Kotarashvili, ranked number 20 heavyweight in the Caucasus, so number 19 and number 20, also weighing 100 kilograms. And he has a record of one win and three losses. The graphics show his record different, but on the official records that I've checked, both these fighters have equal records, very close in the rankings. His three losses have come by knockouts, and it's win coming by decision. This is an evenly matched fight of two fighters wanting to step into the bigger leagues. Kavans Klaichev in the last fight broke the winning streak of the Georgian fighters. Can Kotaras Vilay change things back? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC heavyweight bout. So please welcome your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 30 years old. He weighed in at 100 kilograms. He stands 182 centimeters tall and has a record of three wins with two losses. Representing Predator Gym from Iran, Kurie Nemate. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 28 years old. He weighed in at 100 kilograms. He stands 190 centimeters tall and has a record of one win with one loss. Fighting out of Tbilisi, Georgia. Please welcome Georgi Koto Ashvili. It's Your referee for this bout is Suleiman Almudian. GFC 17 heavyweight division. Namate in the blue, Kotarashvili in the red. A touch of gloves here, Ian. Well, let's see what the heavyweights have got, Ian. Well, everyone likes to watch the heavyweights. A huge height advantage is what Kotarashvili has here as he towers over Namate. Namati again known for his wrestling and his and submission that's, wrestling. That's exactly what he does. He goes for the shot. Gonna drive up against that cage. He's Good defense though. Good defense. But for how long? Persistent there and he gets his ear onto the spine. He's round the back. But this isn't wrestling and there's a threat of the Kimura from that position. Namati could use, I was gonna say could use knees. He could actually use his left knee to the head. Not sure how flexible he is, there you go. He tried and he couldn't get it high enough. Pick up, take down, sacrifice throw, but he's got a Kimura. He's got a Kimura. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult to finish it from that. D difficult to finish it, but could reverse him over. That's exactly, yeah, yeah. 
He's going to keep hold out Kimura Grip. Kimura Grip is a threat from anywhere. Oh, he's he got tapped. And he tapped. Wow, he... why didn't he roll? He's... The forward roll is the way out of that. And he's... There you saw Kotrashvili slipped his leg into the half guard. A lot of the half guard, but there was plenty of time before that, as you see, and for Namati to roll out. As soon but as you feel a threat like that, you do a forward roll. And he left it too long. And this is what I said about the wrestlers, you know, in that position, the wrestler, it, it, the Kimura is always a threat and it's not wrestling. There you saw Namati fall. Falls back, it's a sacrifice, so rolls over, but stays in that Kimura. And it's always a threat against a submission fighter. But the rest he flattened him out. And rather than roll, he was flattened out. He didn't even get a half guard. I thought he'd actually locked half guard, but he just flattened him out. Another great win, and the Georgian fighters are back to winning ways. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, 10 seconds of the very first round, we have a tap out to a Kimura. And your winner in the red corner, Georgi Kotorashvili. Georgi Kotorashvili, submission victory. And he will move up in the rankings at heavyweight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC bout in the welterweight division. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage, Arman Tukhtashimov. GFC 17, we have a welterweight contest. And the first fighter making his way down to the cage is Tiki Arman Tukamishov. Tukamishov is making his debut here now from Kazakhstan. And we've seen some fantastic fighters coming out of Kazakhstan just recently. Shavkat Rachmanov in the same division as a welterweight is really making waves as an unbeaten fighter in the UFC. His countryman, Arman Takamishov, looking to follow in those footsteps. The fighters I've seen from Kazakhstan have excellent Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The level there is really, really good. Good wrestling. And again, the strike, and you see the build of Takamishov. Really reminds me of an early Shavkat Rakhmanov. I was lucky enough to call many of his early fights. Well, let's see how his fighting compares. And now, welcome his opponent to the red corner, Georgi Egnatashvili. His opponent making his way down to the red corner, representing Georgia, is Georgi Egnatashvili. Now, Egnatashvili has two wins and no defeats as a professional, and he has four wins by knockout as an amateur. He's an exceptional fighter, a very, very good striker, and my suggestion to Tukamishov is to turn his fight to the floor. Well 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the welterweight division. Now let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 20 years old. He weighed in at 77.1 kilograms. He stands 178 centimeters tall and has a record of one win and no loss. Representing Zeti Tarlan from Almaty, Kazakhstan, please welcome Arman Tuk Tamishov. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 22 years old. He weighed in at 77.1 kilograms. He stands 175 centimeters tall and has a record of two wins and no losses. Representing Durham Fight Club from Georgia, please welcome Georgi Egnatashvili. And your referee first bout. A welterweight contest. Egnatash Ville in the red. Tukamishov in the blue. This is Kazakhstan versus Georgia. Both guys unbeaten as professionals. Side to side movement. Egnatash Ville. Yeah, just for the discrepancies on records from my notes. I go off the official sites and some fights are not recorded. But these two fighters experienced unbeaten young fighters. Nice to see fighters who are unbeaten taking on each other at this early stage of the careers, not dodging. Yeah, just the getting challenge. back to your uh, yeah, your your scoring. Um the, the the fight records. You look online and you see some fights are not actually online and then when you come to an event, you know, they've had three or four fights instead of one or two that's registered. But that, again, that's just to the fact that they haven't got time to either put them online or some likes of Tapology, they will not put your fight up as a win or a loss unless you have the full fight card results. Yeah, well, I don't think anyone <laughs> pays attention to that site anyway anymore, Ian. <laughs> so, oh, nice right hand. It was an example, Ian, it was an example. Yeah, so nice right, left right there again. I was talking... Ian, on the walkout about Shavkat Rakhmanov, we saw a lot of him and he really like, led the way for the Kazakhstan fighters. You see the similar build from a welterweight here with Tukamishov. Yeah, yeah. Rachman was a class of his own UFC fighter now. So he's really matching the striking here of Egnatash Vilay, who we know is a very strong, solid fighter as an amateur and a professional. And they are throwing down these two. Oh, that one just missed the mark. Nice short elbow in the clinch. That was cool. Yeah, I like to see the short elbow. Oh, and right hand. distance. That wobbled him. He's that him really down. wobbled him. He's so it. That's it. It's over. This this he's gone. Is, is, oh, wow. That is wow. As an amateur and professional, that is win number seven by Nutcalf. That Nutcalf's. was unbelievable. He has got dynamite in those hands here. Georgi Egnatesh Vilai, powerful, dangerous striker. And here we'll see the replay. The pick up of the leg, the body kick. So Kamishov was really growing in confidence here. But what came back was destructive, sharp punches and elbows. Right hand in. That right hand started it off. And he just let go with a barrage of bombs. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes of the very first round, we have a winner due to referee stoppage to ground and pound in the red corner, Kiyogi Egnatashvili! He is a dangerous, dangerous striker and he is going to take some beating. He's got a couple of words to say. Siamones, that Zambit, what 
Tahun magari, dari yang di maju batu, kita maju pakai tahu kado, kurang baik kita habis bicaps. Erta tu insan ini kita tu orang kita pernah berita, kamu tu sok kedap, tu pernah ferry kamu tu. Best trainer reps, pernah zali yang di maju. Kiori kau berapa tahun lagi tahu kado, zali yang di maju bagi dia. Ini betul, esa dami yang ni habis. Alamat tu trainer. چه میوچه خیلی اولیا کویلا پرشی میخوادم. هوگوس پیرادوشی هست. کویلا پرشی هوگوس کاری نداشی. اول زنی هدی دی مزوبا زمان نو پاسخ دی. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC bout in the bantamweight division. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage, Mohamed Shagatov. So the next fighter making his way down to the blue corner. He was a real character as well on the weigh-ins. Nicknamed Rambo. He wears that Rambo bandana around his head. He has a record of two wins and no defeats. His last fight coming with a very aggressive fast win. One minute, 21 seconds by TKO. An aggressive fighter. Coming from Kazakhstan, he's just watched his countrymen lose there to the big punch in Egnatashvili. I, I do not think that that is going to knock the confidence of this young man. who's wore the long johns underneath his shorts that go past the knees and they are not allowed. GFC follows the rules, the unified scoring and uh, the unified rules which do not allow shorts past the knees, those under shorts. another change here so what we do let's have a look i was talking about the co-main event and main event that co-main event we've got the number three flyweight versus number one and then we have a big featherweight title fight the main event kavicha koritsi vs shermarat kalilov And now, welcome his opponent in the red corner, Helguja Gorgia! <laughs> Making his way down to the red corner. This young man is 19 years old. He looks young. However, he's already got himself a good record as a professional. Four wins, one defeat. 
is very tall for a bantamweight, standing 180 centimetres tall and in great shape. Two wins by decision, two coming by TKO. This fight will be fireworks early on. Neither will want to let the other get the upper hand. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the bantam weight division. Now, please welcome your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 23 years old. He weighed in at 61.2 kilograms. He stands 172 centimeters tall and has a professional record of two wins and no losses. Representing Takte team from Kazakhstan, Magomed Shakhtar. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 19 years old. He weighed in at 61.2 kilograms. He stands 180 centimeters tall and has a record of four wins with one loss. Representing Batumi Fight Academy from Batumi, Georgia, El Guija Gorgia. And your referee for this bout, Suleiman Almudian. Bantamweight professional contest. It's a big fight. Much anticipated. Rambo Shakatov taking on Gorgia of Georgia. Rambo's looks so focused. Like you said earlier, Ian, the Kazakhstan fighters, they have a big name amongst the MMA guys. There's not really a bad fighter amongst them. And as you can tell with his 2-0 record, and I'm sure he's had a fantastic amateur record. I don't know if you've looked that up, Ian. No, but they all do. I was saying that on the way in. That, you know, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the striking and the amateur credentials in Kazakhstan have got a great amateur program going through to the IMF. So all these fighters coming well prepared. Gorgia as well has had a great start to his professional career. So, you know, he looks young in his face, but he's got a very mature, strong body. You're 19 years old. I started this sport late in life. I had my first professional fight at 31 years old. Yes. I was past my sell by date at the time I started. It's crazy how the sport's evolved and great to see these young fighters who, you know, they get to this age and they're already very well experienced. And GFC is a massive stage. It is a huge opportunity for these two fighters. Oh, that nice was... defense. That was good. Timed that beautifully. Like a matador and a bull as he circled off. I like that, yeah. <laughs> Lovely work here from Shakatov, who's now took centre of the cage. Nice job, Shakatov. Timing is beautiful on Shakatov. He can see everything that's coming toward him. Yeah, well, early on it was Gorgi who took centre, and I think just by the sharp accuracy. Shakatov has took that. Again, the jab, such a fantastic weapon in mixed martial arts. One, two to the body, it changes levels. He's punching on the rebound, is Gorgia. Gorgia throwing the punch, but before it's even reached its target, you can see him pulling back. Yeah, well, Maybe it was a disguise to get the clinch here. I think maybe because he wasn't winning the striking match, he maybe gone into the clinch and decided to try something different, but that's good clinch work here. With his back against the fence from Shakatov, who's defending the takedown, he's now turning his opponent, the swapping knees. 
quite equal in the clinch. Looking to pull away that single, uh, well defended by Shakatov. Gets, gets the take down, but not for long. Yeah, bounced straight back up there. The hips didn't even touch the floor, I don't think. He needs to turn a little bit more when he's got a single like that. And I'm on about Shakatov. Needs to get that shin across the hip just that little bit more. That'll defend it even better. Yeah, at the moment, just sort of got the knee in there. But there, still defending the takedown. Gorgia steps off, comes back in with two big strikes. Knee to the body from Shakatov. And it's Shakatov now looking for the legs. This is a takedown. Oh, he grabbed the fence. Didn't That's stop anything though, side control. Big pick up and slam into his own corner. It's all Slide knee on belly, over to mount. Will he go for the mount or will he knee ride? He'll go to mount. Oh yeah. my. He's got one minute or just over one minute Solid. to cause some damage. Big punches down the middle now from Shakatov. Switches to the elbow. Always like him. Fighters land the punches, then switch to that short elbow, looking for damage. Oh, that was nearly a good mount escape. He managed to get himself away from his opponent, but the opponent just balanced and got back on top. Yeah, Shakatov readjusted well. Secure position. Still 30 seconds left. Is he looking for the army? And is he going to yeah, try? Yeah, he stepped up. It looked as if he was going to. He, if he if he knows how long he has left, maybe it's the last 10 seconds. He'll switch for an armbar. Well, he's in his own corner. I'm sure they're instructing him. Looking for the triangle there as it goes across the arm. 20 seconds left. I think we're going to see a step off for a submission attempt before the end. 12 seconds left. There's a 10 second knock. Will he try and switch for the arm? Yes, he does. He does. Yes, he does. The leg came over a little bit too late. It was. It came over a little bit too late. He did it at the right time, though, and it didn't really affect much there. A nice scramble. Gorgia ends up on top. He'll have a little bit of a positive feeling that at least he finished on top. Yeah, it, that'll give him a little bit of positivity from that mount. And uh, we can see it was that. The matador. The matador. I like it. Ball. I like it. <laughs> From maybe we've just given him a new nickname. But saying that, it's called Rambo. So uh, I like Rambo, but definitely a matador in that first round. Well, both guys have took the option of sitting on the canvas. Gorgia looks tired there as he sat in the corner, deep Big breaths. Deep breaths. So they've had the instructions after the first round. The corners have seen the fighters. They know what they're dealing with. The referee has called in just to dry up. We've had a few slips tonight and he doesn't want to see more of that. Drying down the fighters. Doesn't want any risk of the slipping. And we're going to go into the second round here. Rambo Shakatov. For me, winning the first round. Although Alguya Gorgia finished on top. Second round, Ian. Yeah, I've got to agree with your description of the first. Definitely Shakatov won that. But a confidence boost at the end for Gorgia. Shakatov throws the low kick, but he's a bit hesitant. I'd like to see him get back on that front foot again, try to back up Gorgia and both guys look heavy off. on the legs, don't they? They both look tight. It was a fast paced first round. Little bounce and a threat. 
he's backing up Gorgia, but slowly. That nice sharp jab again. Gorgia taking risks now, going for the head kick, then to the body. Both short. He's got the reach, but the distance in is going with Shakatov at the moment. Lupin punches, missing the mark. Finger in the eye. Yeah. Shakatov lands the jab. The poke, eye poke went in. However, he should wait until the referee stops the fight. You can't just walk off. A fighter cannot call time themselves. Agreed. But as it stands, the referee giving him some time. He says he's OK. And the action will begin again. We're in round number two. Gorgia in the red. Shakatov in the blue. Shakatov with a jab to the body, a right hand to the head. Again, it's that little loop and right hand, though, isn't it? It just doesn't come down the pipe straight. Yeah, he's throwing, like, balling it over it. So yeah. if he's going to attack the legs. If you notice, when they finish... If the punch, it actually comes down to his thigh. Yeah, and then Shooting it, for a double misses. Again, diving in from out of distance is Gorgia. That body kick landed, but it was landed with the foot rather than the shin. Shakatov backed off. Shakatov again backs up Gorgia to the cage side. A little bit of a wild flurry there. Does it show that Gorg is getting a little desperate, Ian? Oh, nice right hand. Yeah, he's skipping around the outside, and he's moving one way, really, as well. He's going to walk onto that right cross. Well, no shin check, no defence. He looks a little shell-shocked here. He does, moment. doesn't he? Mouth is wide open as well. Yeah, not good for taking punches when you get oh, caught in nice the mouth left open. Hook. It's good that to see Shakatov mixing things up. You know that Shakatov is looking at the, the chest area. Not once has he looked directly into the face or into the eyes of Gogia. I do prefer when I'm striking to always look at the chest, even when I was boxing and didn't have to look at the legs. I just prefer to look at that chest and keep my focus on there. And it, when you don't look around anywhere but the chest, it's very hard to read what you're doing. Nice right cross there from Gorgia. That's the best shot yeah, of this the round. Yeah, one he's thrown. A little bit sloppy on the, the attack. Yeah, again, I just feel that he jumps in from too far out for these takedown attempts. Oh, it's a guillotine. He should know how tight it is. I think the sweat and everything is not making him get a good grip. Yeah, again, just complaining about the... Uh, those fingers shouldn't be outstretched. You're actually not allowed to pour out with your fingers out on the new rule set. That was added in because of these eye pokes. If he's going to put his hand out, oh, he has to right hand. close the fist. I mean, the referees have done a grand job. They've been brought in specially for this Batumi event. They are doing a good job. A few, a few mistakes here and there, but nothing that has yet caused no, any problems with the fighters. Definitely not. That was a nice. It was a left uppercut that started off the action. And then again, we saw a complaint there from Gorgia. I think maybe one of the shots strayed a little low. And he's attacking for that single leg good again. Defense. That's good defense. Solid defense. And a heavy overwork. Oh, nice takedown. takedown again at the end of the round. Yeah, yeah, and I was just going to say the same thing. It's like he's finished as well. He's looking for a buggy choke there at the end. Was uh, Shakatov. Well, that was a closer round. That was a, a much closer, closer round. round. Some good success there. And the takedowns, the strikes from Gordia. Head kick. He started, he was a little wild early on in the round. Throwing the 
shots from out of distance, but as he got settled in, he did land some good strikes. Some good takedown defense from both fighters as well. The first round maybe to Shakhtov, second round. Good success for both fighters. To be honest, I've never been a big fan of sitting on the canvas. I've never no. been a big fan of sitting on a stool. No, I'd rather, in a cage, I'd rather stay stood up, not let the blood pool in the legs and that lactic acid start to build up. Well, the referee had to basically pull Gogia off the canvas to stand up. And just as you said, that's the thing with sitting down on the floor, it's, you know, it's the effort of getting back up. And the fighters, they are, I mean, look at the shorts of Gogi, they're absolutely drenched. And when they're pouring it on the fighter, it's going down onto the canvas, and this is why it's taking longer to start the round. Yeah, especially when he's sat with his legs out, sweating onto the canvas as well. And now Gogi is complaining that the canvas is wet. Yeah, it's making about a 1.30 break. Yeah. Good tactics, or just don't sit down? That'll solve the problem. <laughs> So here we go, round number three, GFC 17. Gorgia starts by on the attack. Off. Solid low kick there. I mean, can we really see who is ahead right now? It's anyone's fight right now, I think. One but apiece, maybe? Possibly, I think the second round was closer than the first. Depend how the judges scored it, but I think for both fighters, the one who's assertive and gets on the front foot is the one that seems to win. Now, if Shakatov can keep pressuring Gorgia back and work like this, he can take this third round. Gorgia needs to get himself back in the action. Guys have thrown single shots. I'd like to see Shakatov throw a combination. Maybe, well, there was two there, but maybe two or three shots from Shakatov. When, especially when he has Gogia backed up against the cage. That's the, the moment you should be throwing one or two punches, three punches. Definitely. Well, it's Shakatov that was backed against the cage there, and he managed to turn off the fence. So that's another groin shot. This time, he's going to need five minutes. We have a problem with the tape again coming off the gloves. It's obviously not the right tape because when it's getting sweaty, it's coming loose. He's undoing his pants, I don't know whether. Tiredness as well. This will have a lot to play. The bouncing up and down. But they've still got the clock running. I hope they realise they should have stopped it. Yeah, I'm sure the official timekeeper have put a pause on theirs. Well, the corner are looking over there, looking at the clock on the screen, and they've stopped the clock. The action's going to begin. Both fighters ready. A touch of gloves, show of respect. And we go straight back to Shakhtov backing up Gorgia. Well, the time is not going to be correct if it ends in 2 minutes 13 seconds. Now, I think there's a good three minutes left here in this round. At the moment, Shakhtov has got the takedown. He's inside control, looking to move up towards pressuring the shoulders. Hammer fist as he gets to his feet. He's going to look to try and move around to north-south. Dropping that elbow. Again, he's going for that knee ride. He liked the knee ride into yeah, mount. He, he slipped into mount from the last time. There we go. And yeah. this time, 
Bogia will be absolutely shattered. Will he have the energy to escape? Will he have the energy to want to escape? Well, he's, he seems to be looking for the angle for a submission earlier than he did last time. There's one minute 20 left. Yeah, there's the arm. He's securing he, the arm. No, he decides I, to go back to full mount. Yeah, maybe he wants to soften him up first, throw some punches, make him not want to escape the submission. Punches raining down. I'm sure both corners will be screaming the time left. We don't know exactly how much time's left. There's one minute on the clock here. Probably an extra minute, we think. I've got a funny feeling they're going to stop the clock at the time we can see, which is 48 seconds. Well, in a way, it's possibly a saving grace for Gogia if it does end when the well, time runs out here. I think Shakatov. I can see him starting to maybe work for a submission. He's switching positions in that mount. He went down to the low mount, locked it up. Well, he tried for the mount escape. Oh, he switches back to side. Strange thing to do. Yeah, it was a, he, but he's got a good pin with that now knee back, ride. Yeah, now back to mount. He, you know, he puts the knee ride right across the hips and keeps those hips flat on the floor. Nice punches into the head. Well, I haven't heard the 10-second knock. So we must have extra time to what we can see on display. Yes, we have. Yeah, so here we go. I, I think possibly around a minute there that we were waiting. So... We still have Shakatov controlling the mount position. He's trying from bottom, but... without any success. But is, is winning this round on points going to be enough here? That's the thing, we don't know. We don't know how the other, other rounds have gone. You know, the second round was so close, it could have gone either way. We maybe one each going to this round, but this is definitely... Mukambet, Shakatov. It's been all him, really, this round. The third round. I think he won the first. I think he's clearly winning the third. And the second was very close. And now we go with the 10 second knock. Finishes off with a flurry. Yeah. Big shots coming down and I do think that's a win for Rambo, the man from Kazakhstan. You would think so. Really strong finish. And I've just seen Gurgir actually pointed to his arm as if he's got pain in his arm. He has a problem. We will see. There was that groin shot. There was a few shots that went in low. There was all in the flow of action. No deliberate illegal shots. And there was a beautiful ground and pound strike coming down. already celebrating. Rambo in the film went into enemy territory against all odds and came out victorious. Shakatov doing similar here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a unanimous decision. In favor of your winner, in the blue corner, Mahabir Shakatov. Mohamed Rambo Shakatov, the winner on points.
Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC bout in the featherweight division. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage, David Kachaturian. GFC 17, the next fighter representing Armenia and making his way down to the blue corner is David Kachaturian. This is a featherweight professional contest. He made weight yesterday. 65.8 kilograms of championship weight for a featherweight. He won his first fight by rear naked choke. He's lost his last two by strikes. And he'll be coming back here to try and get to winning ways. Good submission fighter. And now, welcome his opponent to the red corner, Ilya Kwaruk Ishvili. So his opponent making his way down to the red corner, representing Georgia, Kwaruk Ishvili. He has a record of two wins and one defeat. I said earlier, it defines a fighter how they come back from losses. He lost his first fight on points, always a difficult scenario to come back from. But he came back in fantastic fashion. He's had two really good wins by ground and pound. A strong fighter, good ground positioning and a good work rate. This is another great matchup here. Armenia versus Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the featherweight division, and this bout is sponsored by Eclipse Casino and Hotel, Metro City, Batumi Fight Academy, and Vitamin E. G E. So now, let me welcome your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 25 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 171 centimeters tall and has a professional record of two wins and one loss. Representing Hey Martik from Armenia, David Kachaturian. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 26 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 170 centimeters tall and has a record of two wins with one loss. Representing Gallum Fight Club from Georgia, please welcome Ilya Kwaruk Enishvili. And your referee for this bout, Vusal Bayramov. The featherweight professional contest here at GFC 17. Kurakishvili in red. Kachaturian in the blue. This is Armenia versus Georgia. Two evenly matched fighters here. And it's Kurak Vishale taking the southpaw stance and the center of the cage. Pouring that jab out, but nothing being thrown yet. And Kachaturian just saw there we go. back. Swing in those punches, but nice takedown. Beautiful Love. reversal. Lovely work. As soon as he's back hit the mat, he rolled. 
He's got a powerful underhook there, pressuring down on the head. He's locked up the S grip now. Oh, no, he hasn't. So he's got an overhook and that strong underhook still. Maybe looking to get the reversal. Yeah, you could try and turn him from here. Very difficult to do with a good wrestler, but if he's got, yeah, now he's got chin control. He's got a chin grip, which will help him turn if he needs to. Instead, he pressures his chest into the fence and it allows Kachaturian to get back to his feet. Nice knee from the back position. Krakenishvili trying to get this takedown. Using a lot of energy and strength. Nice knee. Yeah, Kachaturian, that sort of split squat. That knee went over the middle. Again, he goes into that sort of lunge position, drops the hips down just to defend against the fence. The referee could break it up here. Maybe seen just enough action with the knees, but it's just a, a jockey in a position and pressuring backwards and forwards, really no significant strikes, Ian. Nice knee to the head, albeit wasn't very powerful, still scoring points. But the corner seemed happy with it, that's what they've been asking for. He goes with the right knee and they'll come up again with the left. Karakanejvili dominating this clinch work up against the fence. We're halfway through the first round. But he's got those hands locked at the back, which gives you strong... And, and I oh, thought, nice. That was a nice duck under there. I actually thought he had Turian. locked tight enough to go around. And when he did, he slipped and his opponent ducked under beautifully. Now we're back here in the same position. Yeah, he's strong in this position, Kurakishvili. Even when he made the mistake, then he's managed to readjust and still get back in, pressuring Kachaturin against the cage. Certainly the stronger of the two fighters. Again, he grips those hands. This time he's going to try and get it tighter and get that turn and throw. Yeah, you can turn, sit down, throw him behind you. Is his confidence going to have gone after slipping off the first time trying this move? Powers the shoulder in, he's got his hands gripped tight, he keeps readjusting the grip. I think he's thinking about the drop. Double overs, do a sacrifice, throw a suplex. He could. Again, is, is his confidence going to have gone after he slipped off the first time? If he's not going to do it in the first round, he won't get it later on when no, the fighters are slipping. All sweaty. Thing is as well, you have to bring your hands up high to the chest. You get the overhooks, hands up high to the chest. And then you basically got to put your legs in between your opponent's legs as close as you can and then suplex and over. You've got to go for it. It's not one of these moves where you can try it without conviction. Well, the referee, again, would have every right to break this up. There's an, an overhook lock and a lock at the back. There we go, as you call it. Oh, I think it's actually for a oh, low blow. Oh, he's actually stopped for a low blow. Wow. But I think there was... It was the right time to break up, whether it's done with a low blow or done by the referee. Hopefully we'll get back to some action on the outside. <laughs> referee saying shush to the corners. The corners aren't allowed to interact with the fighters while they're having this kind of a break. Kurakishvili talking to his corner, the referee not noticed. As Kachaturian jumps up, again, that sort of slamming the feet into the ground after a groin shot does relieve it a little bit. Or does it? Well, don't think much does, to be no, honest, Ian. to be honest, no. It's maybe, not the most maybe pleasant it's experience. Maybe your throat does. <laughs> but you've been hit that hard. <laughs> So here we go, back again with the action. We're coming to the dying seconds of round number one. 
Kurakishvili in the red, Kachaturi in, in the blue. As he's looking for that big left hand, oh, he the head kick comes in. Powerful nice strong strong and power and punches. Well, that makes a change from clinching up against the cage. It does. It was frantic. There wasn't a lot landing clean there. But it was nice, aggressive attack there. And that'll give Kachaturian a lot to think about as he walks back to his corner for round number two. Karatnishvili definitely taking the first round for me. Just yeah, for the yeah. length of time he had his opponent pinned up against the cage. And then obviously that flurry of ground and pound at the end. Yeah, I agree. If you look at the... And that nice reversal as well there. You know, he landed a good combination. He got taken down and he managed to reverse it on the ground. And then there was this great combination to finish the round. So good round for Kurakishvili and a band from Georgia. Kachaturian stays stood up between rounds, listening to instructions from his corner from Armenia. Round number two. Be nice to see a flurry like that at the beginning. Yeah, definitely. I like to see Kurakish Vilay start fast. Oh! Yeah, the right cross and the inside low kick from came from Kachaturian. Now again, it's like we said about these fighters after the first round. The corner gives them instructions. It wakes them up as well, mate. Wakes them up. So he's come out. He didn't want to end up underneath. And he's on top now. Start of round number two. Looking to go past those legs, pull the hips away from the fence. With a real battle going on there. Correct his right now, yeah. Let's it, see what he's got from his back. He accepted being pulled away, but as long as he got full guard. What's the referee stopping him for this time? Same thing. Elbows to the top of the head. So, the referees here are scoring the, the elbow straight down if they're on the back as, a, as an illegal blow-in. Well, it shouldn't be because perfectly legal in UFC, 12 to 6 elbow is illegal, but that is a quarter to nine. <laughs> <laughs> a quarter past three, whichever way you want to look at it. Well, maybe the referee hasn't got his clock. But at the moment... And maybe saying it's illegal because it's on the top of the head, as long as it's not the back of the head. Yeah, well, he's he's holding the back of his head now, but it didn't look to me like he was hitting the back of the Definitely head. Definitely not hitting the back of the head. So the medic in to check that the elbow didn't do too much damage. So the referee is taking off a point for that as well, which he has to do for stopping the fight. So that is for a blow to the back of the head. It wasn't the back of the head, though, and that's the thing. No. How can you hit the back of the head when you're on your back? He would have to basically put his head, the crown of his head on his tummy for him to hit the back of his head. It's just, it just doesn't make sense to me. Maybe, well, maybe, I don't know, they've been told that you cannot elbow the top of the head as well. And if that's the reason why, then well, forgive we us for... Yeah, we went at the rules meeting, Ian, and that is twice it's happened, so very likely that that is the case. So, to not give any advantage to the fighter who has fouled, they've started back on the floor with that fighter on his back. 
So here we go, Katsuturian. So driving forward, pushing his man around oh, the mat as he strikes. Um, plata, um, plata. He's got it. He's going to use it as it. a sweep, I think. He's got the sweep. But that was a fast change there. That was Knees good to work. The body. It's a great move for a sweep, and It's hard to get a finish in that position. It is, it is. Especially when you haven't got a gi to hang on to. Oh, it's his turn to take them to the ground. It's a pick up and slam in his own corner. You see the cornerman there, very close, giving the instructions now. Well, Kachaturi and had good ground and pound from top position. Koraganishvili, let's see what he's got. Halfway through the fight now. Difficult to score. Very difficult, it's to and fro, isn't it? But obviously, I think, depending on how well Koraganishvili does in this, this round, it could be a 9-9 round. Or if not, it's going to be a 10-9 round. So either way, he's either drew this round or lost it. And he's got a lot of hard work to do in the next. Yeah, really, I mean, if Kachaturin has a good end to this round, it could even be 10-8 with a point deduction. But at the moment, it looks like control here from the top for Kurakish Vilay. Looking for a big overhand left there. It's very hard to do ground and pound when your head is on the chest. Very hard. You can hit your opponent, but there's no power there. And if you try to throw with power with your head on the chest, you kind of miss with your punches. If you see just in front of us here, Karakish Villai, as he's on top, he's really like bringing the mouthpiece out of his... Yeah, it's nearly it's like, falling out, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like he's struggling to breathe, he's tired, which maybe indicates why he's chest to chest and not really... He's wanting to stay on the floor, but he's not really doing a lot of work. Again, the tape is coming off the glove. Kachaturin trying to make space. He's cross-facing nice his elbow. elbow. And again, nothing comes back from Kurakishvili. He's on top. He's doing enough to not get it stood back up. Well, the referee, I was going to say, you should stop the action and move that tape. So he takes the tape off, lets them continue. 30 seconds left. He's controlling position. He tried to pass. Catch Katsuturian, just good hips. Yeah, nicely moved him back into guard. Good hips, yes and no, because if he had really good hips, he'd be up on his feet by now. Well, he's not, he's on his back, he's in the middle of the cage. Karakishvili is going to finish this round working from the top inside the guard. But he's not done the damage he could have done with his position and this opportunity that he's had. Well, we go into a third round here. Now, Kachaturian is complaining of that shot landing after the bell. It was on the bell, really. And, I, I, you know, he's already complained about an elbow to the top of the head. Now it's a punch after the bell. These aren't good signs. They're not good signs because at the end of the day, if that punch was before the bell, he would have just carried on fighting as normal. But because he's claiming it's after the bell, he's looking dizzy. He doesn't want to get up off his front of his feet. Yeah, signs of a It's fighter. amazing how the strength of a punch can change whether it's before or after the bell. It really is. Well, he's going to have to do a third round. Both these fighters, let's hope they've done their cardio because they've had two solid five minutes of mixed martial arts action and it is tough going into the third round. Third and final round. GFC 17 featherweight professional contest. Kurakish Vilay in the red, Kachaturian in the blue. No touch of gloves for the third round. 
They're just going to start. Oh, nice. That was a nice left hand, and again on the way in. Yeah, but catch two but they have clinched up. He tried that spinning back kick, and there just wasn't enough room. Oh, now oh, the knee here we go. goes the other way. Do you know, sometimes when you've got two fighters with an opposite stance and they're getting into these clinch, this does happen. You know, the, the opposite stance, it can happen with low kicks and it can happen with knees. But, I mean... I'd like to see him jump up to his feet and start to try to recover. Uh, I'm not sure what the doctor's going to do. Uh, this is a fight. Oh, uh, let's not see the let's not see the the tap on the bottom of the foot thing. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. Oh. There we go. There we go. I've never seen that one. That's a new one to me. As a medic here, is that something you're going to take on and use? I don't know what to say to that. Well, it seems to have worked, Ian. Oh. He's back to his feet. Donner's not. Georgian Fighting Championship 17. That was a knee. Can I, can I just see it? There isn't anything you can do to a groin strike when you get a hit and it hurts. I know, I've been hit. Painkillers, but by the time the painkillers have started to work, the groin pain has stopped. Yeah. So I've seen people jump up and down. I've seen them be hit the back of the feet or the soles of the feet with the, with a fist. And now I've seen somebody do the breaststroke on somebody's legs. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. I actually think the way that he's reacting, he's looking for a way out here, Ian. I think he's saying yeah, he can't continue, and if that's not, the case... not moving very well, is he? See, there's the referee telling him to jump up and stamp. Yeah, if, you, if your testicle has stuck him into your stomach, then I, I, can, ah, well, I can understand why you're jumping and stamping, but unless that is the case, nothing apart from pain relief is going to and stop time. it hurting. In time, yes, lots of time. <laughs> okay, well, that's one each on the low blows, so things are even. Or one each on the illegal blows, should I say, and the action will start again. Southpaw stance in the red for Correctis Villai, Kachaturian, Orthodox in the blue. Straight into a clinch now. Let's see some urgency now. Both these fighters need well, to get taken down in top position. Karaganishvili is dominating the clinch work. He has had a couple of takedowns from here as well. So, but the thing is, he needs to understand he does have a point deducted. Yeah, so he's got work to do again. He's looking like he's, his knees going up to the groin. They're very close. He's, in this position with these opposite stances, and even just in close to where the knee on the inside of the thigh, got to be so careful, you know, just a little movement and it's an illegal blow. Oh, there's another Again. one. Well, if he gets a point deducted here, if he sees that's it, it's game over. So now it's Kachaturian lay on his back and he is going to get the same treatment. Medic's in. Yep, let's see the butterfly stroke. It's only fair that he gets the same treatment that his opponent did. to hear Karakish Villai talking to his corner. He doesn't think they threw the illegal blow. I think he did it. Well, I, I could, it you could see it coming. I don't think it was intentional, but he just when you're kneeing that I don't close. think any of them are intentional. We do understand that. But both fighters need, they need 
a good stern warning. Either stop throwing knees to the legs. Yeah. To the inside of the legs. To the inside of the legs. Or I am going to disqualify both of you. It spoils the action, it spoils the fun for the crowd. The atmosphere in the arena actually comes down a little bit because of this. Well, no, nobody wants to see it. We've got five super fights coming up after this, Ian. Real fantastic fights, and it's a flyweight female contest oh, up I next. Can't wait for the girls. And these I can't two wait. were forehead to forehead at the weigh-in, pushing each other back like two rams. I am really looking forward to that fight. So whatever happens in this one, We've got big things to come. Mariam Chorchivina and Arab Moshigan. Okay, well, it can't be too long left. It's a shake and a half minutes. And it's a powerful double leg there. Kirkish will like trying. Wants to dominate this final round. He's got the overhooks again. We see this very dangerous to do. And they need to stop throwing these. They need to, they've got to stop doing this. Because if another blow to the to the groin. It, one of them is going to get disqualified. And in all fairness, even if something is close but not actually on the groin, depending on how much of a sportsman their opponent is, they could pretend it was a groin shot. Yeah, all these short little knees to the legs. Because they're both on, uh, on bad terms nice. with the... Yeah, they nice. <laughs> they're both on bad terms with the referee right now. Have you ever seen a double DQ, Ian? I can't, to be honest, I don't think I have. Seen a double knockout. <laughs> there we go. Oh, this is better work. Take down there, hips pulled away from the fence. Correct, Villay. Settled for full guard there. Katichurian pushing him away. Ninety second left, this third and final round. Long as he works enough, he can keep it down for the rest of the round. But he's got to keep moving, he's got to keep punching. Well, I've completely lost track of where I think the fight was scored. I know there was a point deduction for Kurekish Villay, yeah, however, Kurekish he's Villay lost the point, yeah. Position, so it's going to be a difficult one for the judge to score. So we can expect maybe a little delay as they add up the scores. And they're watching it as a judge rather than a commentator, so it's a little different and making notes and scoring officially again. Stop there just to take the tape off the gloves as we're in the last minute of the third round. And I mean, for positional dominance, it has been Ilya Kurekishvili all the way through, really. It has, yes, it has. But this seems to me like a 30-minute a fight, not a 15-minute fight, with all the stoppages, all the groin strikes, the illegal elbows. Or oh, they claim to be illegal el elbows. Well, we're going to go to points. We're going to hand over to the judges for the official decision. We have 10 seconds, Ian. Anything can happen. <laughs> Maybe another groin shot. <laughs> another, another groin <laughs> strike from the guard. <laughs> and we'll hear the final bell. We'll hand over to the judges for the official decision. I think the stoppage to be added onto that. All right, so there are a couple of stoppages, possibly. Here's the 10 seconds.
Yeah, so stoppage time here, and in stoppage time, Karakis Villay stands to his feet in land strikes, drops back down into the guard, and will hand over to the judges. I think we will. And RMC in the machine, Freeman for the official decision. There's one of the groin shots. It was a good fight in the claims to as good attacks here with the wrestling and the positional control and ground and pound of Kurakish Villay. It was just marred a little by those low blows. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a unanimous decision in favor of your winner. In the red corner, Ilya Kronikinishvili. One minute. Here's to the music as to share. We shall be with the dancers of the Dovas, while the Madrovas is most of this. In the Irish Madrova, the Dauhadu, Sank Shere, or your country, the Federalist President, the Yuki Kabula Swiss, as a Timagari organization, the FCS, Sheikh Ministries, as a Timagari, the Nevi Shatari Swiss, the Madrova. Minta madlu bagai tahu kadu la sebarang muzis. Madlu bagai minta kadu kadu. Cepat mas. Raul tu tar Raul. Raul. Miku akhir jemau. Cepi aja beri buli. Rosha Rusechi. Cepat tu sekolah zaman gaya jono bayi. Minta kide. Madlu bagai tahu kadu. Cepat. Kul cemat kiraps. Cepat das. Romelit sas bar gaya taris da. Cepat mego bars. Minta. Isteri Drodat Gesro, Arsyed Kartuelli, emigran Cia Cia Arta Suli Muzda, akhir cahmu Suli Muzda Kartuelli, emigran Cia Cia. Madlova Kuelas, meminta kita bertiga gas tua, minta Amiran Gok Aziz Mimar tu, tahu ia tiada champion, seniaga kualuk Zaze, beori Kartuelli mukdeba, di organisasi Cia Cia champion ini kata, out si lebelat, kena kaut Malayu itu. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we now have a female flyweight bag for you here at GFC 17. So please welcome your first female fighter to the cage in the blue corner, Arab Mozgan. Georgian Fighting Championship 17. This 
is the super fights and the first of those super fights is a female flyweight contest 125 pounds 56.7 kilograms and the first fighter making her way down to the blue corner is Arab Mojgan she's fighting out to the run making a debut professional mixed martial arts but an experienced wrestler and fighter this fight nearly happened a day early at the weigh-ins when both fighters pressed their foreheads into each other, were pushing each other back, and both looked like they wanted to let go. The promoter got in between, and the action was safe for today. Moshgan will make her way into the blue corner. And now welcome her opponent to the red corner, Mariam Torchinva. So her opponent making her way down to the red corner, Mariam Torchinva. She has had two fights as a professional and is already ranked pound for pound best in the Caucasus. Her last fight was a TKO victory in the second round. She certainly doesn't look like a fighter when she stood smiling like that, but wait till you see when she starts to let those fists fly. She was just as willing to go at the weigh-ins yesterday as her opponent. Both these fighters itching to get started here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the female flyweight division. So please welcome your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 32 years old. She weighed in at 56.7 kilograms. She stands 164 centimeters tall and has an unbeaten record of two wins with no losses. Representing WSF team from Lebanon, please welcome Arab Mozgan. And now welcome her opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 19 years old. She weighed in at 56.7 kilograms. She stands 172 centimeters tall and also has an unbeaten record of three wins and no losses. Representing Gurham Fight Club from Georgia, please welcome Mariam Torchineva. And your referee for this bout, Suleiman Almundian. This is the start of our Super Fights Georgian Fighting Championship 17. Tocineva in the red, Mojgan in the blue. Touch of gloves. A bit of respect for these two fighters. It's nice as they start. I just said, and these two fighters looked like they wanted to go yesterday. Yeah, I watched the video. Obviously, I wasn't there at the weigh-ins, but the way they were head-to-head, -head, uh, they had to be separated. Well, they're starting a little more patient than I thought they would. Nice low kick. Torchineva. Torchineva with a nice right hand. The, the chin is a little high of Mojgan as she comes in. She needs to watch out for those long, dangerous strikes of Torchineva. Nice turn. Torch Van got the cage. Oh, she's got oh, a left. She, oh, that and was a big mistake. Up, and that, that was tight. a big mistake. She's locked up. This is over. Oh, this she's is going to sleep. If she does not, she's going to sleep. She's out. I think she's, she's out. Asleep. She's the out. She's not seen. She's out. Referee's slow there to yeah, see. Yeah, a little bit slow. You can see by her eyes she was out. 
But the official time was one minute. She made a big mistake by turning her back. Whether you are on the ground, on your knees, upside down, or standing up, never turn your back. I was saying here, she's a, she was a competitive wrestler, and you could see that she went down, looking like she looked like a fireman's carry, and just gave up on that. You can't do that against a mixed martial arts fighter. Very tight underneath that chin. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute of the very first round, we have a winner due to Rhea Naked Choke. In the red corner, Miriam Torchinova. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC bout in the featherweight division. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage. In the blue corner, Karim Chauch. So next up, we have a welterweight contest. And the first fighter making his way down to the cage is Karim Chauch. Again, this is a fighter who stepped in last minute and needs to be given all the respect in the world. You can see that in his corner, we've already seen a debut fighter shock everybody with his performance. Chauch is tall, he's 187 centimeters tall. He'll have a big reach advantage over his opponent and he is the unknown. We know very little about this fighter, other than he was willing to step in at last minute for this event. Ladies and gentlemen, now welcome his opponent to the red corner, Zarubi Perskeliani. So his opponent, a young fighter from Georgia. 22 years of age, 180 centimeters tall, and also weighing in at 77.1 kilograms. Zarabi Perskeliani has a record of two wins and one defeat. His last fight was a TKO victory, very fast in the first round. International contest we have France versus Georgia.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the welterweight division. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 33 years old. He weighed in at 77.1 kilograms. He stands 187 centimeters tall and is making his professional debut. Fighting out of Alliance Martial Arts from France. Please welcome Karim Jaouch. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 22 years old. He weighed in at 77.1 kilograms. He stands 180 centimeters tall and has a professional record of two wins with one loss. Representing Warriors, Tbilisi from Georgia. Please welcome Zarubi Pertskeliani. And your referee for this bout, Fusal Bayramov. Well to a professional contest. Pertskeliani in red. Chouch in the blue. Georgia versus France. Chouch has a huge height advantage, long reach. His kick is caught, and it's a takedown yes. already. Good takedown as well, but the long legs, you have to be careful. There's he going, work, trying to work for a triangle. Powerful the ground and pound is too much. Chauch on the bottom needs to get out from this position. Perskeliani gets past to half. Now he's pressuring, he's got back exposure. Do you think he'll step over? He's got the wrist control. Dagestani, the Dagestani handcuff. Handcuff, there we go. <laughs> nice, powerful shots here. They are as well. They're getting through, they're hitting the mark. Yeah, lovely. Good control in ground and pound here. No intelligent defense. Oh, he's got the neck, he's got the neck. Yeah. Yeah, he's got it in tight. We could have another this is quick be finish over here. Quick, I think, Ian. Deep on the neck, flatten him out. That's out. it, he flattens him out. Will he, he, that's it, it's over, he taps. the replay here you see he stepped over to the half guard he reached under you can see him pulling the arm in he went for that Dagestani handcuff then locks both hooks over the back flattens him out ladies and, and really gentlemen control. after one minute 13 seconds of the very first round we have a winner due to tap out to rear naked choke in the red corner Sarabi Perkas Galeade Zurabi Berzgeliani continuing his fantastic wins. The fighters from Georgia. Some real good performances here. And we're going to hear a few words from Berzgeliani. Kamarjobat, Moges Salma Bit Huelas, Pirwerik Shiminda Madloba Gadao Hado, Federatis President Georgi Kabula Shinsta. I'm Shejibris. What is she, Darlene? I'm Shejibris, organizator, Lasha Baramides, Madloba. Ertior, you're the sit with me in Dout Caro, Samos that you met on kilogram she, Memgonies, Mesa Mega Marjeva Yoda, War Girsi, Rowi Brzolo Kamarze, did Madlobas Mogasene to Am Shetawazebas.
Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is a GFC bout in the light heavyweight division. So please welcome your first fighter to the cage. In the blue corner, Ilkin Shekeliev. This is a light heavyweight contest in the first fighter. Making his way down to the cage from Azerbaijan with a record of three wins, two defeats, 23 years of age. This is Ilkin Shekeliev. Shekeliev is also a replacement opponent. He's a very good fighter and always ready to step up. Solid wins to start his career. Two by TKO, one on points. He's lost his last two fights. I've had the, the pleasure, as it were, calling his fights over in Russia. And then there were two very tough fights against good opponents. So a fought against high level fighters. Just here because he's got another one here tonight. And now, welcome his opponent to the red corner, Mikhail Sezianani! So his opponent making his way down to the red corner, needs no introductions for GFC fans. Mikhail Sezianani is an exceptional fighter, 93 kilograms, seven wins and two defeats. The number four light heavyweight in the court process. He had six solid wins in a row before his last fight. We saw him. The last Georgia Fighter Championship I was calling. And he was caught with an armbar. Well, he's back here. He wants to get back to winning ways. Sure that that was just a blip, anyone can get caught. Sashiniari is a big, strong, light heavyweight. And he's got a lot to prove here tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the light heavyweight division. So let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 23 years old. He weighed in at 93 kilograms. He stands 178 centimeters tall and has a professional record of three wins and two losses. Representing Asset Fight Club from Baku, Azerbaijan, please welcome Ilkin Shekhereliev. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 25 years old. He weighed in at 93 kilograms. He stands 190 centimeters tall and has a professional record of seven wins with two losses. Representing Gurham Fight Club from Tbilisi, Georgia, please welcome Mikhail Sajeriadi. And your referee, Suleiman Alamundian. Light heavyweight professional super fight. Mikhail Sashijiniani, seven and two. Oh, big overhand right. Shekhraliev, three and two. He comes here to fight. Oh! Solid body that kick That was there. to the chest, I thought it was the head. 
Are these guys really 93 kilograms? My, they are huge. Absolutely huge fighters. And that was a big body kick there from Sashiniani. So Sashiani with Warrior tattooed on the back of his neck. He's coming out. Oh, he's coming. He's yeah. coming out firing. He is bombing. Even if those punches don't hit the head, they could knock you out. Ground the pounds coming down. We watched him last time out, Ian. He was on a six-fight winning streak, and he got caught with an arm bar last time we were here in Georgia. And he's got something to prove, obviously, here. Man, he could knock you in the next week with those punches. Big I mean, look at the power down. in those ground and pound shots. Big punches, driving those punches down from on top of that Referee's half guard. He's not even interested in passing. Yes, that's it. Wow. He's got wow. what he wanted. Ground and pound victory from Mikhail Sashiniani. He's back to winning ways. was a solid victory against a good opponent here in Sherpa Aliyev. He just didn't give him a chance. That body kick there, and then rolling these big right hands. Sherpa Aliyev was like a rabbit stuck in the headlights as he pounded down the shots. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, 15 seconds of the very first round, the referee calls a stop to this contest by the way of ground and pound. And your winner in the red corner, Mikhail Sashesiade. Your winner by ground and pound in round number one, Mikhail Sashesiade. for our co-main event and main event. Two huge fights ending in that excellent featherweight title fight. Morgen Sal Mehmet, Batu Berhals, Didi Madova, Kurshe Matni Urobistuis. Didi Madova, Mira, Gada Ujado, Kuala Chem, Kurshe Matni Uwars, Chem Sparin Parmi Urobis. Vince Berchi Medga, Amkis Gamolo Bashi. Memi da Madova Utkani Khalks, Misa Jero da Chemi. Mi ujeda wadi Misa, Amkis Sport Charsa Guli, Sir Tulei Misa, Mi Marts Misa. Misa Chemi Jero da Bonam de Jeroz. Ola ima da Mias Dizimad Loba Mida Utkani. Gansa Mutre Mur Dizimad Loba Mida. Rad Kma Uda Utkani, Am Shedjim Bis Organizat Urebs. Georg Rabulashuis, Chuen Pedras President, Rasa Tsikiaget of Chuntus, Sportsman of Swiss, Umagresia Damiani, Olas Tizimadro. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now on for the co-main event of the evening. And the co-main event is sponsored by Eclipse Hotel and Casino, Metro City, Batumi Fight Academy, and Vitamin E. G -E. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your first fighter to the cage for this co-main event in the blue corner, Serkan Valili. It's time for the co-main event of the evening. This is GFC 17 bottom fight night. The first fighter making his way down to the cage. 
represents Azerbaijan. A record of eight wins, four defeats. He's 24 years of age, 171 centimeters tall, and weighed in on the limit at 56.7 kilograms. He is the number one flyweight in the Caucasus. Fantastic record. Eight victories with a mix of wins, of points, submission, and TKO. That strong team, the Baku fighters. The team who are famous representing Azerbaijan across the world. And now welcome his opponent to the red corner, Becca Gogoladze! Huge crowd support here for the next man making his way down to the red corner. He has a record of eight wins and two defeats. 26 years old and 170 centimeters tall. So evenly matched on paper. This is Becca Gogoladze. Lily, number one flyweight in the Caucasus. Gogolatze, number three flyweight. He's got a lot to prove here. He wants that number one spot. He won his last two fights by first round stoppage, earning his right to be here, and he really wants this win. This is a really big fight for him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the core main event of the evening. And this is a GFC bout in the flyweight division. So please welcome your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 24 years old. He weighed in at 56.7 kilograms. He stands 171 centimeters tall and has a record of eight wins with four losses. Representing Ugu Fight Club from Azerbaijan, please welcome Serkan Valili. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 26 years old. He weighed in at 56.7 kilograms. He stands 170 centimeters tall and has a record of eight wins with two losses. Representing Gurham Fight Club from Georgia, please welcome Becca Gogoladza. <laughs> and your referee for this bout, Suleiman Almondian. This is a flyweight super fight now. Gogoladze in the red, Valili in the blue. Two top flyweights and expect fast action. Very similar records, similar styles. Should be an entertaining one for this coming event. Yeah, definitely so much to prove, to prove here for Gogolatze. He thinks he's the number one flyweight. For Lily, right nice number one. body shot. Strong low kick. Gonna get, oh, that was nice. That was more like a calf kick. That was strong. Valili has to come back now. He's got to retaliate from that one. Powerful start from Gogolazzi. He gets oh, him to man. Big, big, flying. big takedown and turn. He's inside control. He's controlling well against the fence. He's hooked that near leg. He settles back for guard there. You can see there, Valili looking for oh, the triangle. triangle. Passes nicely. Yeah, that was well defended from Gorgolazzi. Yeah, Valili was setting it up. 
And he just waited for the right moment, passed through. He's got a chin strap. Switching through to a guillotine. Willing pull guard. He's going to go for it. He's going to go for the Peruvian necktie. Peruvian necktie. Oh, Peruvian so, necktie. Yeah. This He's is tight. back to a guillotine. Going back to a guillotine. Great work. Nice switch of positions. And that is tight. He must have tapped. We couldn't see from our angle. But he tapped. Nice switch on Peruvian necktie to guillotine. And Becca Gogolazzi proves that he is the number one flyweight in the Caucasus in fantastic fashion. Beautiful. He gets the big takedown and turn. Controls his opponent. And then as he turns, he goes to the front headlock, drops down. And a lovely attack on that guillotine because of the way he dropped back. The arms were not in position to do any defense at all. That was a lovely finish. Ladies and gentlemen, after 1 minute 37 seconds of the very first round, we have a winner due to tap out from a guillotine in the red corner, Becca Gugulatze! Becca Gugulatze is the number one flyweight in the Caucasus and he's now 9-3 and three as a professional. Morgan Salman Betroelas, Madloba. Adloba Moslus, please. Es aris motivatsia, tkvel khat motivatsia chats. Ekhla pirolekshi minda madlobi dauzo da. Am didu adloba sukhti Giorgi Kabulashvits. Chveni GFC's president's chveni ojakhis tsars. Madloba gi, zalian didu. Madloba Lasha Baramidzes vrchidgomistvis. Chems trenerebs, chems gunts. Zalian didi madloba. Oilas. Tam khashi, tromis tu sweet amenjis madlobagi. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Batumi, are you ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a featherweight title bout consisting of five, five minute rounds for the belt that you see, the G. FC title. We would like to thank our sponsors for this event. Eclipse Casino and Hotel, Metro City, Batumi Fight Academy and Vitamin E.GE. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Are you ready? Then please welcome your first fighter to the cage. In the blue corner, Shermarad Kalilov. It's time for the main event of the evening. The first fighter making his way down to the blue corner. Known as Patira Shemurat Kalilov, representing Kyrgyzstan, he has a record of four wins and no defeats. 
He has two wins by a rear naked choke, one by decision, and one by ground and pound punches. He's a phenomenal fighter. A very tough fighter for anyone. And perfect for our main event here. 145 pounds, 65.8 kilogram title fight. And now welcome his opponent to the red corner, Kavisha Konitsa! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening and this is a GFC bout in the featherweight division. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 23 years old. He weighed in at 65.3 kilograms. He stands 177 centimeters tall and has an unbeaten record of four wins with no losses. Representing Takate team from Kyrgyzstan, please welcome Kalilov. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 29 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 183 centimeters tall and has a professional record of six wins with two losses. Representing Batumi Fight Academy from Batumi, Georgia, Kevicha Karidza! And your referee for this bout, Vusal Bayramov. Listen, listen to my comments all the time. When I say stop, stop the fight. Touch gloves. Good luck. 
Georgian Fighting Championship 17 Batumi Fight Night. This is Koritze in the red, Kalilov in the blue. Featherweight super fight. The crowd. Well, here we go. Crowd already going crazy to touch gloves for five five minute rounds. I think everyone tonight has come here to see this man here, Koritza. Koritza starts off strong. <laughs> Solid leg kick is checked. Body kick attempt there from Karitze. So we expect in the five round fights a slightly more tentative start and feeling the opponents out. And that's exactly what we're getting here. There's been two solid leg kicks. The first one checked. I don't think they'll take any risks, seeing there's a lot at stake here. Not just the title at stake, but obviously bragging rights as well. I mean, the whole arena is on their feet now for Karidza. Kalilov will not want to lose that unbeaten record either. There's a lot to be said for that 4 0. Glancing blow just as he was moving backwards, though. And both these fighters have shown great skills in their fights on the ground. And it's interesting nice to see them both choosing to stay standing now, maybe both wary of the other's groundwork. I like how Karidza moves the head on the way in, he just doesn't stay on the center line. Yeah, nice two left oh, hooks. Nice. The kick came back from Kalilov. Good underhooks. Karitsa comfortably changes stance. Powerful. Look at that long paw, that reach. Fighting long, as we call it. So he has to get past that front hand before he comes in. Or as he comes in, that's a gauge. Again, steps forward with jab, then comes, follows it with more punches. A smile from Kalilov as he backs away just out of distance, but they were close. Yeah, Kritzer needs to be careful, though. He's swinging a little bit with his hands down. Too keen to impress, maybe. He comes in with the first two with his head movement, and then he just starts throwing. Very dangerous against Kalilov. Kalilov giving him something to think about that handout. Loads up a shot oh, to Kalilov. Down. He used that That's as the opportunity. What he's been waiting for, yeah. Mm. Please, you spotted that as well, Ian. There's a triangle. He's out. Solid leg kick, good fast step up. Yeah, good work to get back to his feet so quick. Oh, he got tagged down the way in. And this is Kalilov now stepping through the gears. Kalilov was very aware of that fast groundwork. We've seen all those submission wins from Karitze, and he wasn't staying in that guard for very long. If someone fights long with the arm out like that, you have to fight long with it as well. Because if you try to come in with short punches, you're going to get tagged. So you have to come in with long, like that, you have to come in with long punches. Oh! Good takedown. Yeah, that was a nice takedown into the half guard. And I do think the half guard could be a good position for Kalilov to try to secure, to avoid the submissions on the ground, but still be able to dominate. But again, he steps back out the guard. He's very wary of the groundwork of Karitze. And rightly so, we saw how fast he went up for that triangle. Yeah. You can feel the cage behind him, he needs to try and... You oh, he got oh, that's a big he got on the way in! He's, took He's out. out! He's out! Oh, my Huge, word. heavy bombs! He was standing up, and he got knocked out! 
on the way up. Oh, my word. He absolutely rocked him to his boots with that right hand, shook him. The leg stiffened. He dropped to the floor. Shemurat Kalilov, five wins out of five. That was a big one. The man who likes to be known as Pantira. Two chokes, one decision win, and two wins by strikes now. He is the Georgian Fighting Championship featherweight champion. down on his record as a big KO. It was a huge shot. The ground and pound shots on the floor just finished it. We've seen knockouts, we've seen submissions, we've seen ground and pound. We've seen hard-fought decisions. It's been a great night of action here. Georgian Fighting Championship 17, the first Batumi, Batumi fight night. Getting a little excited here. It's been a great venue, great support all around the city for this event. And it lived up to all expectations. So the Georgian crowd is silenced, stood up quiet. They cannot believe what they've seen. They're expecting the final win for the Georgian fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, could I ask the MMA Federation President, Georgi Kapanosvili, and the founder of Batumi Fight Academy, Lasha Baramidza, to please award the belt to the winner. But ladies and gentlemen, after four minutes, 45 seconds of the very first round, we have a winner by the way of knockout in the blue corner, Shumarad Kililov! Five fights, five wins, and the GFC featherweight champion, Shumarad Kalilov is his night tonight. Thank you to everyone who's watched the live stream. I hope you've enjoyed as much as we have here. And we hope to see you back on the next Georgian Fighting Championship. Gamarju Bijo Dobri Vecher Batumi Sema Salam Walegum Per Wachir Hachu Skazat Alhamdulla Spasiba Seushimo Zatosha Zako Dien Mia Padari Alhamdulla I Adien Spasiba Mayam Sapernico Hvicha Hvicha Krasavchik Brat Yati Awajayu Eta Chista Sport а так, красавчик, брат, я тебя уважаю. Это чисто спорт, ничего личного. Отдельно хочу поблагодарить организаторов Кабулашвили нас, брат, президент лиги GFC и команда Underdog Садыку Нурадину. И отдельно хочу поблагодарить нашему дорогому человеку, тренеру, Василий Тахтаю за то, что он мне подготовил к этому бою. Я думаю, иншаллах, мы доберем до UFC, иншаллах. Вы все увидите. Алхамдуллах. И 
Спасибо нашему партнеру сети ресторанов. Самый лучший ресторан в Казахстане. Акадзаки и спортивную магазину М Спорт Маркет и магазину Богачи. Всем рахмет. И, и хочу разыграть свою футболку чемпионскую. Сейчас. Кто громче кричит, ту сторону кину, кто поймает. Это маленький, но для меня дорогой отец. Красавчик. Всем рахмет от души. Кивича, брат. Здоровья тебе. Желаю счастья. И, и вернешься сильнее. Все здесь, кто за Квича приехали поддержать. Это спорт, в этом спорте все кай может быть. Завтра я могу проиграть также. Так что ничего нету такого. Алхамдуля. Добрый вечер, уважаемые э, гости, уважаемые организаторы. Уважаемый грузинский народ, спасибо вам большое в гостеприимство от всего казахского народа, кыргызского народа. Это всего лишь спорт. В этом не, не надо видеть никакую-нибудь политику и так далее и тому подобное. Мы все дружеские народы, дружеские государства и дружеские организации. Дай Бог, и ваши бойцы у нас дерутся, и наши бойцы у вас дерутся, потому что это спорт. Спорт – это мир. Так что всем спасибо. Не, не судите строго Хвичу, он хороший парень, он у нас был в гостях, я его лично знаю. Поэтому просто сегодня не его день, сегодня день просто Пантеры, Шермурата Калилова. А вам всем спасибо большое. А, особенно, а, особенную благодарность хочу выразить моему другу, товарищу за предоставленную возможность Георгию Кабулашвили, директор, президента Лиги GFC и президента Федерации ММА Грузии. Спасибо, брат, тебе большое за предоставленную возможность. Залиан Диди Мадлоба, Дурес, Чуэн Чаватарет, Шесанишна Висарамо, Садат Ткуэн Нахет, Саукате Сосакартулос, Хуэлла Цонити Катеро Категория Вши Мебзоле Би Ромелмат Шеркина Чуэн Стум Ревсу Цхоэттан Чамасули Мат Цонити Категория Вши Саукате Со Мебзоле Рагат Радхма Унда Хвичас Могеба Хуэлла Сгвиндода Тумца Рогор Цагниш На Чуэн Мага Марджуэбулма Эгари Спорти И Марджуэбс Злиэри Дгэс Ариго Хвичас Дгэ Да Каргати Лапарага Чуэн Мас Тумарма Да Моулу Цот Мас Так и до Эртхалме Минда, Утхра, Чем Мегобарс, Киорги Кабулашвилс, Ро Эгети, Ламази Сахамоши Сазлевлоба, Чуэр Мокса, Компания Эклипс, Ромель Мац Пхарида Аучира, Древандел Сахамос, Компания Метрос, Ромель Мац Кверчи Дагуидуа, Тквен Хуэлас, Тквен Таганс, Гихтит Мадлоба, Чуэн Дзирпас Турмевс, Ромель Мац Дагуапаса, Табобзанда, Цали Антити Мадлоба, Человек пирде битро, потом ши эс турнир и пирвели арикнева да эсикнева цалиан ахлохан ши кидо да албат исе да арсте баром эсикнева уго календар ши килот сау тревен дел дрес килот сау тревен дел сагамос батлоба гуэлас батон георгиз гадау цем ситуас кидо да кидо минда гуэла тите ултхен тагаз гадаги хаудот матлоба Радкма он да минда миулоцо, тревандели, чени, организации, ахал чемпионс, тревандели чемпионы ба улоцао, сулида гули, да им сакурдаманес, трес чен квас ахали чемпиони, амтонти категория шида эстеба эса дамиани да ицас ховелтвис эс гирсе бада эс камаре, ро икос джиоси чемпиони. Хвела киде ти ти олтко та гас. Хвела им монати ле спортсмен минда залиан ти ти матлоба гадау хадо ромел мас дрес амокта гонзе миго монати ле оба. Хвела им клубс. Хвела им тренерс. Хвела им маса олев 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 свин дрес аки хунеда вин цак чвен гонзе хунед дрес. Киде ота киде гули да сурит. Киде вертхелухти матлоба. Лаша бара мидес компания Eclipse. 
ყველა იმ ადამიანს რომელი ადამიანებიც ჩვენს გვერზე იდგნენ ამდენი ხნის განმავლობაში. გაიხარეთ მაზლობა დიდი.